Uh, okay, so we're going to reconvene the Brattleboro Select Board meeting. Um, it's uh, six twenty. Uh, I asked before, but I'll ask again. Uh, John, was this meeting properly warned? Yes, it was. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, uh, so I think I can start with looking for a motion to approve the minutes. Jess, I move that we approve the minutes of February twenty first. 2023. Excellent. Just, um, pregnant. 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 Uh, any discussion board? I do yes. want to bring your attention to something. Please. They are different this week than they were last week. Oh. The only addition was the text of the statement that was read at the meeting from Kurt Dimes is now an attachment to the minutes. Oh, just that first page that was read. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Daniel. I guess like minutes are in draft until such a time as they're approved. So there's yes. the draft and then the draft changed. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah. No, because oh, I read though. Yeah. I cool. appreciate, I appreciate that. And so for, yeah, uh, for people's memory in that meeting, um, there was a very uh, kind individual who was willing to actually read that first page into the record for consideration during the public hearing. Um, and so having that just in the minutes just captures um, what was read into the, into the hearing anyways. So thank you for doing that, Jess, and identifying it. Um, other discussion on the minute for? No, and I don't see any hands in the public. So um, in that case, uh, Jess has made a motion to approve the minutes of February 21st, 2023. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, that's going to carry 5-0. So um, I actually aired and I want to make a quick motion board. Um, uh, new business agenda item 8G um, has been warned incorrectly. Uh, if you turn to that page of the agenda, it says committee appointments at 9.25 p.m. Um, the uh, That should read announcements. And also the backup material is um, not accurate either because it, it, it should be, it's actually what was going to be for this meeting, um, but it should be what was for last meeting. So given the fact that the warned title is incorrect and the backup material is error, is uh, it has an error in it, um, I would move that we remove that item from the agenda tonight uh, for consideration at the next select board meeting uh, committee uh, announcements. Um, is there any discussion on that? Yeah, I guess yes. it's just worth pointing out that we were supposed to meet last Tuesday. Correct. We had an agenda published and we weren't able to meet. And so this agenda is a sort of mishmash of both of those kind of things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's mega meeting. Mega, me mega meeting. So uh, any other discussion on that? Nope. Okay. So uh, in that case, uh, all those in favor of removing the uh, Committee, uh, uh, it says the committee appointments, agenda item eight, uh, new business G. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, <laughs> carry five zero. Okay, so we're gonna move on to chair remarks. Um, so I've just got uh, a couple of remarks this evening. First, um, I wanted to uh, let everybody know that tomorrow night at 5.30 uh, at the um, academy school, uh, there's going to be, uh, first, uh, will be the, uh, the Caucus. words, caucuses. caucuses. Thank you for the districts for representative town meeting. Uh, and then immediately after that, uh, I believe starting at six 30, we've kind of changed the times is, is six, 30, I think it's six, six, six o'clock, yep. six o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll actually start the informational session for representative town meeting, which is going to be on Saturday. Um, this is a, uh, uh, gathering of both the represent, uh, representative town meeting informational sessions. We were supposed to have two, but because of the weather last week, now we have one big one. So we're going to be discussing all of the articles and that includes the bond votes. So it's going to be a lot of information. It's going to be uh, uh, a really, a really great meeting. Um, and so both uh, obviously uh, RTM reps, but also the public are invited to join. Um, it's going to be in person and it will also be on DCTV. Um, also, I wanted to let uh, RTM members know that um, any motions that are made as amendments during RTM uh, under other business should be submitted in writing to the moderator prior to RTM. Uh, and 
um, that there is a Robert's Rules tutorial on the town's website under the uh, representative town meeting section. And it's uh, very useful uh, and people should think about uh, viewing it to refresh themselves on how Robert's Rules works if they're uh, gonna be at RTM. We operate under the limited uh, small group uh, RT, uh, uh, Robert's Rules, which is very different than like the formal Robert's Rules. So um, just coming to a select board meeting isn't probably a sufficient refresher on how those work. Um, and then finally, Representative Town Meeting itself is gonna be held in person at the uh, BUHS gym on Saturday, March 25th, and it's gonna be starting at 8.30 in the morning. Finally, um, I just wanna take a moment to recognize that we have two members of the current Brattleboro Select Board, uh, Tim Wessel and Jessica Gelter, who are going to be uh, leaving us after this meeting, but this is, just, this is their final meeting. Um, I wanna take a moment to thank them both very much for their time, Jess, uh, two years on the board, and Tim, six, six years on the Brattleboro Select Board. Um, you know, I think I can speak uh, uh, for uh, the board in much thanks for all the time that you've given to this town. Um, you know, public service, I believe in very deeply. <laughs> and um, I'm I've been very grateful personally um, as an individual, but also as a member of this community for your time and your effort and your thought um, and your love for this community. Um, so thank you again for your service. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll miss you. And uh, also, uh, I'm very excited and looking forward to the new members, uh, uh, Peter Case and Franz Reichsman, who will be joining us um, at the next select board meeting, which will be the uh, organizational meeting, which is on this, Monday, 27th. the 27th of March. And with that, I uh, conclude my chair remarks and I pass it over to John. Okay. Thanks, Ian. And um, thank you, Jess and Tim, as well. It's been great working with you for the short time I've been here. Uh, happy spring to everybody. Uh, we had, oh, it seems like ancient history now, but we had an election two weeks ago. And I just wanted to say that town meeting day in Brattleboro was busy and went very smoothly, thanks to the really fine work of town clerk Hillary Francis and her team. We had a higher than average turnout for this type of election in Brattleboro. And uh, thank you to the Brattleboro voters for showing up voting and for always being pleasant at the polls. The poll workers went above and beyond to um, fill in for each other and make sure our voters were able to cast their ballots in a safe and enjoyable manner. Um, thank you also to the Brattleboro maintenance crew for really going above and beyond uh, with setting up the polling place and clearing some last minute and unexpected snow at the rear of the American Legion uh, where people were slipping on. Uh, as well as also thanks to the DPW crews for their assistance with snow removal in the campaign area. Uh, and uh, really appreciate the American Legion for hosting the polls again this year. And finally, thank you to the candidates and congratulations to all on very well-run campaigns. Uh, the second thing tonight, I wanted to update you on the situation at 16 Washington Street. Uh, the town gave 10 business days to correct the health violations at this address, uh, conducted reinspection the week before last, and found the or that your order had not been complied with. Uh, so the town is now seeking injunctive relief through the courts. Although I understand the owner of 16 Washington Street has appealed your order to the Department of Health. So to be continued, and I will keep you updated on that situation. Um, okay, the next thing I had some recruitment notes from the police department. Uh, Chief Hardy and her recruitment team of detectives, officers, and HR staff are diligently working on a goal of six to eight candidates enrolled for the August 2023 Academy. They currently have six applicants in the processing phase of their prerequisites for hire going through background checks currently, and three applicants are up for in-depth oral boards, which are held monthly. If they pass those boards, then they will also be moving to the processing phase. Uh, Chief Hardy will continue to recruit for the Winter Academy as well. We are currently at 16 officers, and if all of these in the pipeline work out, we would be at 25 officers on force, uh, two below full staffing by next year. Uh, the next thing I had was uh, 
Well, originally I was going to talk about the snowstorm of Saturday, March 4th <laughs> um, to thank the DPW crews for their work on that one. But on March 14th, of course, we had a very big snowstorm, which was uh, about four times the size of the one uh, in December. And uh, in terms of the work that it took the DPW crews and the fire crews and everyone else, uh, the police crews and everyone responding to that. Uh, Dan Tyler and Peter Lynch kept the whole road show going. I was impressed with their communication and strategic thinking and the incredibly hard work that the D DPW crews did on clearing the roads, keeping the water running with no electricity and helping people out generally throughout the town. Chief Hardy and Lieutenant Evans and their team did a great job on checking up on people uh, and helping those who were stranded for days without heat and um, getting them to, to warmer uh, shelter. Appreciate Chief Howard and uh, AC Care and their team um, for organizing everything around the emergency response and for supporting the team of firefighters who were kept very busy throughout the storm. I really have to call out Carol a lot, though who helped coordinate everything with the Red Cross for an emergency shelter, working with the school, finding electronic signs to direct people to the school, to, to the shelter, getting breakfast and dinner for 25 people donated, figuring out showers, and I'm sure lots of other things. Um, in fact, at our wrap-up meeting with the Red Cross, try, uh, I noticed the uh, Red Cross manager trying to hire Carol away from us. So that, um, <laughs> He, he told us at that time that in 23 years, he's never had a community that has been as accommodating and supportive as Brattleboro. And he's afraid that their staff, the Red Cross staff, uh, will only want to open emergency shelters in Brattleboro from now on. So it was very nice. Carol asked me to thank and acknowledge for their assistance with the Red Cross for providing a space at Brattleboro High School, school superintendent Mark Spenno. Uh, Principal Cassie Demkoller, uh, Facilities Maintenance Manager Ricky Athier, and his staff. For organizational support, uh, the American Red Cross, of course, the Vermont Medical Reserve Corps, and Windart Vermont uh, Disasters Animal Response Team all helped out in that effort. And finally, for food donations, Brugger's Bagel, Vermont Inn Pizza, Brattleboro House of Pizza, Dunkin' Donuts on Canal Street, and the Vermont Country Deli all chipped in and helped out um, with the people that came to the shelter and have, getting them a, a warm meal. So really grateful for the teamwork and the partnerships that keep Rattleboro a resilient town in the face of challenges like last week's storm. Finally, uh, Planning Director Sue Fillion asked me to mention that Brattleboro was submitted to the Strongest Town Contest and we made it to the Sweet 16. Uh, so please go to strongtowns.org to vote. Brattleboro is up against Dun Ellen, New Jersey. And uh, voting goes through Thursday, March 22nd at 1 p.m. That is all. <laughs> I just like deflated my chair about how many comments you had. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, thank you very that, much. That's the mega meeting. The mega meeting comments. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, John, for that. Um, board members, uh, select board comments and committee reports. Also, I just wanted to note, I also completely failed to also congratulate Liz on joining us for another three years on the Bradford Select Board, we'll, which will push her past him on the, the total record. So, Not that we're competitive. Not at all. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Yeah. I look forward to working with you as well next year. Of course. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, board members. Um, yeah. Uh, to say something. Yes. If you don't mind going after. Not at all. Just, um, I wanted to express gratitude for the two years that I've been able to be on this board. It's been really exciting to um, to be able to step up and take this take this seat, take this space. Um, I'm really grateful for the voters that put me here for two years, and really grateful for the town staff that has been so supportive in helping me understand all of the systems of the town and how things work and what's important. Um, and of course, I want to thank my fellow board members um, who have all provided guidance and mentorship and camaraderie and 
late night drinks at Kips and just a good old time. It's been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to serve on this board. Um, and I always say when those committee appointments come up, get involved town, get involved, stay involved. It's so important. So you'll see me again. I'll be putting my name out for probably one of these committee vacancies that we're going to announce in a couple of weeks. Um, and to Peter and to Franz, um, I have four words of wisdom. <laughs> um, patience, lots of it. Care, which I know you all have in spades. Vulnerability to stand for the things that you believe in and humility to learn and know when maybe you were wrong and to change. Those are the four things that I've carried with me that have been really important to my service. So I just wanted to share them with you as well. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's all. Great. Thank you so much, Jess. Uh, other board members? Uh, I did. Yeah. Tim I did write a thing and, uh, not as good as Jess's, but I wrote it down because, you know, um, so a lot has happened in six years. Uh, in a way, I feel like uh, beginning my service to Brattleboro in March of 2017 and ending in March of 2023 lines up exactly between two very different worlds of select board experience. Exactly halfway through my years, when I was elected chair of the board, we were forced to go fully remote for the first time in history. Before, it was serving with my friend Kate O'Connor, David Scholes, and the one-of-a-kind John Allen, and being elected along with Brandy Starr. Uh, then John left, and we had a great voice of Chantalie sitting next to me for 2018, and then in came Liz and Daniel. And then in came an uninvited and unelected guest, COVID. <laughs> we used to call it COVID-19. Remember that? Um, I spent 18 years as chair during the year of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> but on the plus side, we gained the hardworking young energy of Ian Goodnow also that year and my esteemed colleague, Jess Gelter. Uh, when I say it's been an honor to serve with every one of these board members, that sounds trite to me, but I've yet to come up with a better way to describe the experience as anything else but an honor. If you're having a decent day and you aren't losing all of your votes four to one, anyone sitting on this board should feel honored to have been elected by your fellow residents. But it's also such an honor to be able to put down what you've been doing for real work that day and for a few hours connect with other elected neighbors to try and guide the town thoughtfully and with integrity. It's also been an honor to get to know and work with three very talented and very different town managers over these six years. I would have chosen reluctantly to stay on this board yet one more year or run for one more year if John Potter had not impressed the heck out of me right out of the gate. And I'm so glad you did, John. And believe me, so is my family. Um, <laughs> I wanna also thank every town employee. One of the most wonderful aspects of serving on the select board is how much you get to learn about each and every department and all of the roles played here in Brattleboro and interacting with an amazingly dedicated staff. I hope the new board members make it their first order of business to learn about and appreciate the people who make the town run well, even while asking yourself, how do we make this work better? I'm proud of my service here over the years, and I'd rather go through a list uh, of individual compliments. I'd rather than go through a list of individual accomplishments that I'm very fond of, since this is a mega meeting. Uh, I'd like to, in my last week of service here in this capacity, just provide to the next board uh, one parting wisdom that I've gained over the past six years. And that is that simply passion is not policy. Good policy is derived from a balance of democratically decided, decided desired outcomes and knowing which tools to use to get there. 
I've seen a shift happen, accelerated, I believe, by COVID that has tended to produce a preference for performative activism over experience and expertise. In that rush for change, when democratic foundations are ignored, the people who elected you get left behind and your structure crumbles during the next shaking of the ground or the next election. Take your time to build your foundations. It's slow and it's not as satisfying to bring enough folks along the democratic process, but it's the way to assure that your building is standing long after you've moved on. It's how to honor also all the hard work towards justice that has come before you. I'd like to thank each and every one of my former and current board member colleagues for putting up with my tangents, my occasional personal overshares, the dad jokes, the periodic finger wagging when you were so wrong in your opinions. And the fact, I have to say this, that each and every one of you can somehow manage to be wrong exactly 50% of the time <laughs> is mind boggling, infuriating, and the essential definition of a healthy democracy. I love each and every one of you for what you all bring to the collective energy of Brattleboro. Make no mistake that you are all part of what makes living in this quite insane at times town so wonderful. So thank you for the honor, Brattleboro. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah. Other board members. <laughs> No. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to uh, agenda item six, which is public participation. This is an opportunity to speak on uh, an item that's not or on something that's not on the agenda uh, or to speak to uh, an item on the consent agenda to pull it. Um, so I'll start with the room, as is my want. And I see Frick in the back. You want to come on up, state your name, where you're from, for the record. And um, I'll just remind people, um, I'm going to but we have a lot of things to do tonight, so I'm going to keep with my three minutes for participation. And um, uh, I'll just ask that you try to keep within that. I'll let you know when you're when you're about done. Uh, go okay. Frick's Bright, District 3. Uh, I think you guys are all role models for uh, people in elective office elsewhere. And uh, you, uh, Tim, said it better than I could. And... Uh, I agree. This is a sign of healthy democracy, what you just described. Um, and towards that end, I have uh, a copy of the uh, petition that was circulated about the um, uh, uh, Housing Policy Review Committee. Um, I have racked my brain to uh, improve upon it, and uh, any elaboration I think would be best accomplished by those who are impaneled and decide what their agendas are. Um, so with that, I would like to offer you copies of that. Plus you've seen already, but uh, yeah, no, 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 I don't, I don't think so. Nope. Okay, uh, you guys can share one I'm sure. Take out a few copies and my rough out the door. We can, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Great. Thank you very much, Rick. So yeah, you are currently um, distributing this for signatures. Is that? Uh, it was distributed for signatures. It garnered close to 300 signatures in about 48 hours before the election. That was uh, given all other uh, challenges on my time. That was what we managed to do. Uh, but uh, the town clerk said that that was a remarkable return on investment, <laughs> even though it didn't end up on the ballot. Um, oh, so. yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Frick. Uh, yeah, can you? No? no. Okay. Uh, so I'll go to Zoom now. Uh, any hands? No, sir. Nope. Okay, uh, back to the room. Anybody else want to speak at public participation? Yes. Come on up, Kurt. I am Kurt Dimes. I work with Brattleboro Common Sense. Uh, I live in District 2, and um, I'm the manager of the project, the uh, emergency housing project in uh, motorhomes, which was the subject of your meeting on the 21st of last month. Um, about my not attending in person, um, there was uh, quite a bit of note about that. 
perhaps we should stop now because Daniel, you, you seem to know what that was about. And I would yield the floor to you now if you wanted to say no. Good. Um, no, my turn to speak. It's yours. Good. My, um, I was absent, uh, despite uh, some snide innuendo, I was absent to do you a favor. I had received threats uh, that there would be an ugly mess here at the select board. Um, people have harassed uh, some of the homeless people staying in the shelter. Uh, I have been harassed by just a few people. Uh, most of the people in my neighborhood who talk to me, they come out and say, oh, Kurt, you know, it wasn't me who filed a complaint. So the neighborhood is mostly uh, supportive and friendly. Uh, but I just want to tell you that I'm, I, I stayed away at the advice of my board, not for any sinister reason at all, um, but because I was confident that you would be able to conduct a better meeting without me there as a target for certain disruptive people. And um, Ian, you know, it's hard enough to conduct a good meeting, a, a good fair meeting without people who want the opposite. And the project had already been smeared with enough crap. I didn't want it to happen again. And I didn't want it to happen here at the board. So um, I was actually doing you a favor. And that's why I stayed away. Uh, so I, I can be here now to emphasize about the report that we submitted. Um, I stayed away with the best intentions, trusting that you would hear my testimony uh, in the form of that written statement. But I would never have guessed that you would suppress that statement after saying repeatedly, oh, where's Kurt? Oh, we definitely want to hear from Kurt. Oh, Kurt is the main subject, so forth and so on. And then when, when uh, Steve puts the report on your desk and um, Jessica noted that you had received it all by email, then you found maneuvers and maneuvers to suppress that that testimony, I don't get it. I mean, you lose credibility when you say in one minute, hey, we got to hear from Kurt. And there he is in the form of a written statement and you refuse to listen. That was grossly irresponsible and unfair. I'll ask you to wrap it up, Kurt, please. So um, you also um, failed to respond on the several occasions which I brought the, meet the project to your attention in the previous two years. So I suggest you read a revised version of the report, updated, which I will uh, subject uh, submit to you soon. Thank you very much, Kurt. You're welcome. Uh, back to Zoom. Um, I don't see any hands, so I'm going to look back to the room. And we've got a busy meeting tonight, so I'm going once, going twice. And we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Uh, all right, board. Agenda item seven, consent agenda. Um, John, my favorite part, can you go through each of these items uh, yes, very briefly? Uh, very briefly. We have 12 items on the mega meeting consent tonight. The first item is a recommendation to accept the low bid on audit services for the next three fiscal years from Batchelder Associates PC for a total of $90,945. There are three liquor licenses and one tobacco license uh, that would be approved. All of these are new. A uh, festival permit for the Brattleboro Brewers Festival would be approved. A request to apply for a $77,180 community recovery and revitalization grant to pay for water and sewer lines at Tri Park for infill home sites. And a request to apply for a $6,200 AARP Community Challenge flagship grant to purchase equipment to assist people at the library with impaired vision would both be approved. We would put the, uh, uh, yeah, so those are the two grants. The, we put the monthly financial and EMS reports on consent for you to accept due to the many other high value discussion items on the agenda tonight. There's a contract award request for seasonal cemetery maintenance in the amount of $18,550 to independent landscape and property management of Newfane. And finally, you would be approving a contractor award in the amount of $74,587.89 to Security 101 of Marlboro, Mass 
for camera replacement at the transportation center. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, John. And uh, yeah, I just want to note, um, basically, agenda uh, agenda committee uh, had to make some hard decisions about what to put on the consent agenda because of this mega meeting. Um, and uh, we definitely don't want to make a habit of putting either the monthly financial report or the EMS update on the consent agenda in the future. But we felt that for this meeting with so many important items to discuss, that um, giving the public and the board an opportunity to review the backup material would be sufficient this time. That said, board members, would you like to pull any of the items from the consent agenda for consideration at the end of the regularly worn meeting? I just have another process question. Absolutely. Note. You know I love them. Yeah. Um, I think it's typical that we don't put liquor licenses on consent agendas. Hmm. We have New ones. We have definitely put renewals. But um, just as a thing, it's a lovely opportunity for those businesses to talk about the new things that they're offering in a public setting. Yep. Uh, I don't want to pull anything. I want, just wanted to say that. Specific. And I think I would like, <laughs> John, can you speak a moment to where those businesses contacted and let known that they were going to be on the consent agenda? Uh, I do not know the answer sure. to that. Okay. Um, however, when we were asked, uh, so, some of them did ask, and we, we suggested that you speak during public comment uh, if you wanted to promote the uh, license fee. Uh, and appreciating that, I think what I'd like to do in the future is if we do put any new ones on the consent agenda, that we contact them and let them know that it'll be on the consent agenda and they can feel free to speak during the public comment uh, about it. Yeah. And even ask us to pull it if they want to talk about it even more. Um, other uh, questions, uh, comments, board? Seeing none, I'd look for a motion. Uh -oh. We're going to make it. Daniel. Yeah. Uh, I move to, oh my Lord, very <laughs> far away, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, Daniel has a, made a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's going to carry 5-0. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to move on to uh, new uh, uh, agenda item eight, new business A, which is the fire EMS service delivery approach and proposal for uh, adopting that approach. Um, and ask Chief Howard and yep. AC Gear to come up. So I invite uh, Chief Howard and AC Gear. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. Um, so board, uh, I think uh, John's going to speak to this uh, proposed methodology uh, for the board's consideration. And we may hear from the fire department as well. John, um, I'm gonna hand it right over to you. Okay, thanks Ian. Yes. Um, so this, this item is sort of about how do we figure out uh, where to go with fire and emergency medical services, uh, service delivery approach for the town. Uh, there's a team of town staff uh, that uh, now has access to previously unavailable data uh, and also technical advice from AP Triton uh, Consulting. The, as you recall, the Triton report uh, came to us in December. And we did question and answers in February with uh, Rich Buchanan from AP Triton. The key takeaways from, uh, from th that report and that conversation in February were that we really need to address the deficiency in the town's effective response force, and we need to evaluate a range of EMS staffing models. What, um, what Triton told us was we really need to take the information that they provided in that report and kind of make it our own. What they had given us in the report was four general options for fire and EMS staffing models. Um, as the staff have kind of le leaned into that and been begun breaking down those approaches, we realized that there are really three things that differentiate any approach on fire EMS. The first thing is, is the EMS provider in-house? Is it a contracted out EMS service? Or is it some hybrid of the two where uh, the fire department provides some level of EMS service and the uh, uh, EMS provider provides others? Uh, the second question is, is the service type uh, for, for EMS regional or are there ambulances dedicated to Brattleboro? And the third thing was the level of proximity to the national standard of 16 emergency personnel to cover fire and EMS services 
Um, so how close would each model get to that, uh, that service standard? So for the past 22 years, prior to July 2022, when the town employed the services of Rescue Inc., that was a hybrid model where both the fire department and Rescue Inc. provided some level of EMS service to the town. Under this model, the ambulances were regional and not dedicated to Brattleboro. In other words, there was never a guarantee that an ambulance was within town limits and available for rapid de deployment. On July of last year, the town began a hybrid EMS transport model with Golden Cross Ambulance Service. Under this contract, the EMS provision is also hybrid, but instead of a regional model without a commitment to any given shift, uh, there, there, are, uh, there are now two additional EMS personnel available to the platoon. So that gets us closer to the um, national standard of uh, emergency personnel needed to cover uh, service. It means that the ambulances, uh, though, are dedicated to being in Brattleboro and ready to respond around the clock. As explained in the memo for tonight, uh, deciding on the best fire EMS model moving forward is complicated and it involves trade-offs. We suggested in the memo a goal of landing on a long term on a long range solution prior to uh, the fiscal year 25 budget. In some cases, there's incomplete knowledge to even make an educated guess at the total cost to the town, and that may require seeking propose uh, seeking proposals from external parties. Uh, through a professional administrative request for qualifications or request for proposals. To, to move forward in a deliberate way, staff recommend a four-step process. Securing continuity of service through this transition period, addressing the current contracts and firefighter capacity by May of 2023. Two, pursuing parallel tracks of further information gathering, including risk assessment and public input, about three primary long range solutions, and that would occur through August of 2023. Thirdly, developing a preferred alternative from those three primary solutions and presenting that together with information to the select board for a decision in September of 2023. And then finally, implementing the decided transition approach by July 1st of 2024. So with Chief Howard's and AC Keir's assistance, we're happy to answer any questions about the process. Excellent. John, thank you very much for the presentation yep. and uh, summary of this uh, very thorough uh, memo for the board and the public. Uh, board members, let's open it up to um, you all for questions or comments first before we hear from community members. Um, I, and I actually pause. Um, Chief Howard, AC Cure, did you have anything to? Okay. Great. Um, board members? Uh, Daniel. Yes. Um, thank you. So, John, in your four step approach, right? So, one was secure continuity of service. Yeah. Um, which, fine, makes total sense. Pursue parallel tracks of further information gathering, including risk assessment and public input about, you said, three um, primary long-range solutions. Could you speak a little more to that? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. Um, so table two on page 93 of the packet explains that the primary long-range EMS solutions, mm -hmm. and it's I gave them a name, we, we gave them a name for each solution and broke it down by those three considerations that I had mentioned earlier um, is what type of services it regional or dedicated, uh, who provides first response and who provides advanced EMS. And so the first one would be a hybrid regional contracted EMS model. The second would be a dedicated contracted EMS model. And the third would be a fully municipal EMS. Mm -hmm. So the, there are two options there that I recognize, well, I guess I recognize all three of them, but there's two that seem sort of familiar to me. Um, the one that I think is less familiar would be that 
a entirely dedicated contract to the EMS service. Could you just kind of say for the public what that is in plain language? Yes, um, that would be. So unlike when uh, the town was working with Rescue Inc., that was uh, a regional service and the, the Brattleboro Fire Department was providing first response EMS. So under that model, the EMS provider would provide both the first response and the, uh, the full EMS services, and they would need to have dedicated equipment in town to be able to do that, to, okay. to meet service standards. Great. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask um, providers out in the world who can provide these services to um, send us a proposal or show their qualifications for providing such a service, and they'll, how would we solicit them? Yeah, so um, we haven't figured out the complete details of that. That's a lot of the work that we would be doing through the spring. And that is uh, the, the initial thought is that we would request qualifications. So who out there is interested and what type of service might you be interested in providing to the town so that we could then build a request for proposals where we could actually get some cost figures around what that would cost the town to do one or, or more uh, different models. Okay. That's helpful. Yep. And so, yeah. So, for example, Rescue provided a um, regional model and uh, a hybrid regional model before yep. July um, of 2022. And so, in a response to a request for qualifications, they could uh, respond saying that they would, con if they were to continue to work for with the town, then it would be in a regional model if they wanted uh, in, to do it in that way. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other board members? I th saw Jess's hand, but I think also Liz's. No, Jess? Um, yeah, okay. She's got the notepad, lots of questions. I'm really excited that John is here to look forward to what's next for Brattleboro and what is the right choice for the town based on the data that we've been collecting over the last year. I'm really excited that there will be two new folks who don't have the baggage of the challenging relationship um, or the challenging conversations that we've all been through in the last year to look at the data and move forward. One of the things in this process, John, I take issue with. Here it is. Um, in the AP Triton report, I'm not going to talk about the data. I'm going to talk about the community survey. There was a community survey done in the AP Triton report that really emphasized the importance of fast response times. And what we have seen from the activity of fire department and Golden Cross is that they're able to meet those expectations that the community really said were important. They're able to get there. 90% of call emergent response calls are happening in six minutes or less. And it's amazing. And that's what we get from having a dedicated town service. And we heard Rich Buchanan say there were more people participating in that community sur survey than have participated in other communities that he's worked with across the country. People really cared. People really cared about response time. And I think leaving the hybrid option, um, leaving the regional option on the table in this process would be disregarding what the community was telling us in that survey. A regional option does not seem to be able to meet the expectations that the community has of reaching and and keeping it uh, important calls uh, coming in in a timely manner. And that's based on the data we saw from our dispatch, the data we saw in the AP Triton report. Um, so I think we have to really look closely at that. Is it a political move? Or is it truly something that's going to be effective for Brattleboro when we've seen that dedicated service can really respond in a timely manner. And then the other piece of this that I wanted to bring up was, um, you know, we've been hearing, um, we've been hearing a lot about the need for more firefighters on staff and to build an effective response force or 
um, if they are no longer serving in the EMS capacity and are not responding to medical calls and they are just dedicated to the fire calls, um, we wouldn't need to hire more folks. But in a hybrid model where they are first responders, we would need to hire more. So I think, again, it is going to be really challenging for this board to justify spending the money to hire more firefighters to staff a hybrid option where we are not seeing the income that we would if we brought EMS in-house. Um, so it's a great process. And I think all of the models could be valid, but I think the hybrid regional model should be taken off the table because it doesn't make sense both for what our community wants as far as service standards and for what our fire department needs as far as staffing. And that is how I see it. So, hmm. Great. Uh, thank you, Jess. Uh, done for the moment? Done for the moment. Okay, great. Uh, other board members want to speak on this now? Um, I, I, uh, yes, Liz. Um, well, first I just want to say that I disagree with my esteemed colleague that I think we need to keep that hybrid regional model in there just for the sake of comparison because there has been so much interest in the community. So I think it needs to stay in. But overall, I just want to uh, thank the town manager and the staff because I really appreciate the approach that has been taken in this analysis. And I hope that the um, this cold look at what we actually want to receive in terms of service um, can take out some of that emotion and that we can focus on providing the, the best service for our community. Thank you, Liz. Um, I have a comment board unless, Tim, yeah, please. Just a comment, please. I think. Um, I really appreciate you bringing up the community survey because you know it was easy to, with all these numbers, to kind of forget about that piece. And when you said that, I, I instantly remembered how Rich referred to that, Rich Buchanan from AP Triton, referred to that as being pretty remarkable amount of feedback. Um, I don't think I quite agree about, you know, just taking it off the table because I think the intention here is to kind of provide for whatever landscape might be available in our choices going forward. And one of the major providers in this area might not be capable of a dedicated contract to EMS. So it feels like almost taking that away is feels like trying to eliminate that as a possibility. And I'm not, I wouldn't be ready to support that. Um, for the service standards that uh, Jess is referring to um, that are so important to this community, and I completely agree with that, um, would that be an element of the either the request for qualification or the request for proposal? So whatever model uh, an agency would be um, so proposing for Brattleboro, they would state what kind of standard they would be able to achieve and how those um, standards are checked. Yeah, that's a that's a likely uh, a likely question for the RFQ would be, you know, what what sort of standard could you meet in a regional model? Like, what equipment would you provide, and what kind of reliability could the town count on? Uh, that could then factor into a decision. Once you had costs, about you know what the what the trade off is between cost and and service standards. Over the last <clears throat> chief seven or eight months, <laughs> we've determined that we need to two dead at least two dedicated ambulances in Mr. Bradley. That's what we've learned. We've learned a ton of information uh, that we had to all learn on the fly because we couldn't get it given to us. That's what we've learned is it's definitely a two ambulance town and two to three percent of the time we use 30. So you would need to reiterate that we need two ambulances dedicated to the town. Mm -hmm. For the dedicated contract EMS model. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, John, can you speak a moment to, so you spoke a little bit more on the hybrid regional contracted model and the dedicated contracted model um, for sort of what steps would need to 
be put in place to put out those uh, requests for qualifications or requests for proposals. Can you speak a little bit to the full municipal EMS model and what sort of steps the, the town will need to take as we progress down um, that avenue? Yeah, um, so we're, we're gathering the information as the chief referred to, uh, to that gives us a good sense of what the service standard we could meet under that. So that that isn't going to take very much further investigation. What will take uh, additional exploring on that model is the financial implications to the general fund. And so right now we have a team of the assistant town manager, the finance director and the HR director, as well as the chief and assistant chief, all working very hard on breaking down the financial aspects of that model and looking at it under various scenarios of how close could we get to the national standard and what would it cost to do that in you know, multiple different kind of approaches there. And that might be looking at things like numbers of firefighters. It might be looking at things like what's the design of the shift and, you know, other uh, other things like that that will help us, you know, kind of understand the uh, get to a preferred alternative for the board on that type of a model. Another question for me. Um, so the timeline is very important um, yes. because uh, we are obviously we're going to uh very much uh, secure continuity of service for the residents of the town, um, but also making sure that we are able to make a decision in a timely way. Do you feel confident that the proposed August 2023 and September 2023 deadlines that are proposed here are are achievable? Yes, I, I think they they can get they that can be uh, accommodated in the work plan, and we should be able to do to meet both of those deadlines. Yes. Okay. Yep. Other board members? Uh, all right. Tim? I have a question, and it's really, it, it's kind of like not about the overall plan because I'm pretty in favor of this, but um, it's a question that I won't have a, the ability to ask after tonight. Um, well, I will, but of course, uh, not from this perspective. Uh, in the memo, it's described, uh, there's a sentence, in other words, there was never a guarantee that an ambulance was within town limits and available for rapid deployment. That's in reference to before the change um, and a regional model. Can you explain that? Like th that phrasing just stuck with me a little bit because it. How how often, from your perspective, obviously there might be other perspectives going on. From your perspective, how often was there a significant delay or any kind of concerning delay? Not to say. You know, um, I can't give you an exact amount, but we have waited 20 to 30 minutes for an ambulance when the others here that they had in town here were committed to other towns that came from their um, West Townsend station. So does that mean that, mm -hmm. um, you know, fire was there on site giving giving good care? Correct. Was there a lack of particular care on site or are you referring to just getting the patient quickly back to the hospital? Getting the patient transported back to the hospital. Okay, so it's really all about transport. Okay. Um. Which is why the regional model um, must be hybrid, essentially. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Because it requires that we have some sort of response here locally to be able to actually be there. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a question for, if I was still with the board in a couple months, it's probably a, a mm -hmm. question yeah. that I wanted to... No, a good little... one though. Yep. Yeah. Um, Okay, other board members, and then um, I'm going to turn it over to public. Everybody else in the moment? Okay, so let's go Let's go Zoom first. Uh, I see um, like Dick DeGray. Um, all set? Uh, no, and I may have. No, I got it right. Uh, yeah, hi, Dick. Just uh, say your name. Where are you from for the record? Yep, uh, Dick DeGray, District 2. Uh, Tim just asked the first question I was going to ask is that how many times in the past 22 years has rescue not been able to respond to uh, a call uh, for transport? Uh, and I mean, 
to say that uh, one time or two times is no reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, and so there's, and there's not going to be any guarantee in terms of in-house service if we don't have a, uh, if, we, if we stay in-house, excuse me, there's no guarantee that the in-house service, if we have multiple uh, incidents going on, that they're going to be able to guarantee transport in a reasonable time or manner. So I, I really find it a little disingenuous uh, to put a lot of emphasis on the guarantee portion of this discussion, because nobody, regardless of who it is, and John just talked about, you know, we would be talking about if it was an outside entity, what they would be providing for, for ambulances and, and other uh, equipment that they might need. So uh, I, I guess I, the language here that you're using with the guarantee is somewhat bothersome to me. And uh, because it, it seems like this is an aside against our former partner. And I don't think that we should be uh, using language that kind of assails them to a certain degree when they have been a terrific partner. And I certainly know in my eight years of service on the board, it was never brought to my attention that rescue wasn't meeting the quality. And actually AP Triton talked about Golden Cross, Rat Fire, and Rescue all providing quality service. And so we got to keep that into the forefront also uh, and not look for ways to make one of the entities look bad that might be our partner. And uh, that needs to be paramount here. Uh, I'm not in disagreement with all the conversation. I don't know how we got here. I wish I did. Uh, I don't think I know the whole story, but that's water over the dam and I have to accept that. But going forward, let's sure that we're on a, a level playing field and that, you know, a big part of this discussion, which John just briefly touched on, is the financial portion of providing the service and what an impact, whether, whether minimal, medium, or huge, on the taxpayers of Rattleboro. Can I ask you a uh, your thought there, Dick? Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thanks so, so much. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for that, Dick. Um, I really appreciate the comment. Uh, I think uh, I'm gonna, I want to provide sort of from my own perspective uh, a little bit of clarity on it. I think there's a little bit of mixing up of terminology. The guarantee is more about the difference between a dedicated contracted EMS, a fully municipal EMS, and a hybrid regional model. The regional model just simply doesn't guarantee within the contract any ambulances specifically devoted to any municipality, um, let alone just Brattleboro's contract. Whereas a dedicated contractual EMS contract would have a guaranteed number of ambulances. Right. As far as service, uh, uh, stand, uh, service standards go, that's a percentile thing. So we're talking, uh, we were informed by AP Triton about a better way to determine the service standards that we should be looking for in 90th percentile. Um, so uh, nine out of every 10 calls, we're getting there within seven minutes or 6.5, whatever that is. And that's not guaranteed. And I completely agree with Dick that we're, and we should not be, and I would really look to my board members and to the public that we don't conflate those two. Mm -hmm. More the guarantee is simply talking about, it's kind of, it's, I mean, we could use a different term. It's, um, it's simply a contractual question as to whether we are looking at a third party contractor and saying, part of your contract is that you're saying that there's going to be ambulances devoted solely to our town versus you have, you have yeah, ambulances uh, devoted to a region, and um, you will provide services at a certain standard. Um, and I think that's the difference. So, uh, Dick, I think the comment's really well taken, um, and I would encourage us not to conflate those two things. Um, I'm looking to the people who know more about this than I do, if I got that wrong. No, you did. You got it absolutely right. Uh, I'm going to look to the room next. Kate. Kate. Hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome. Kate O'Connor, Brattleboro. Um, I'm going to pour some super cold water on you folks. 
I do not believe that you should be considering this agenda item this evening, nor do I think you should be considering the effective response force and the ARPA. And the reason I say this is all of these are EMS related. All of them are the staff seeking guidance from the select board on how to make the ultimate, you know, how to get to the ultimate decision on what EMS model we should use. You folks are not going to be making that decision. This board, this is your last meeting. There's a new board that's coming in six days. There are going to be two new people on it. They're the ones that need to be involved in this discussion. They're the ones that need to be giving town staff the guidance. They're the ones, Not I, and I'm not being disrespectful, but two of you aren't going to be here. And I think it's really, really important that they're involved in that conversation. I really think it's important the voter spoke and it's six days before the new board is coming in. I think for the health and the um, of this community that you would not have these conversations tonight, that you would delay them until the first um, meeting in April because you're not going to be making the decision. And I think we have to have the people who are going to be making the ultimate decision on where EMS goes at the table, asking these questions that you're asking, having the conversations that you're asking, and giving the town staff guidance. If you if you consider these tonight and you vote on these things, you have kept two people who are going to be sitting at this table totally out of the discussion. It's like three people making up the rules for five people. And I don't actually think it serves town staff either. You have no idea what these other two people have to contribute. They may actually have ideas that are helpful to you. So I would really urge you to defer these conversations until the meeting in April. It's really the right, it's really the right thing to do. You know, put your own agendas aside, put your wanting to be involved aside, and also do it. Don't do what we all do. We all think that we're the only people that can make a decision, and we're not. You know, there's other people coming in. And I'm actually saying this really seriously. I hope that you would consider it. I'd love to hear what you think about the idea. But I really think for the decision making moving forward, you need to have the people that are going to be with you in six days. It's not six weeks, it's not six years. There's nothing in any of these memos that says this has to be done tonight. And even if it had to be done tonight, I would say don't do it tonight because you don't have the players at the table that need to be making the decision. So I'd love to please defer these agenda items. Thank you very much, Kate. Uh, I've been talking a lot. If other board members want to speak first, Daniel, I'm also happy to speak to it. I guess a couple of things like, um, hey, you know, when we were putting this agenda together, um, there were some things that were originally on the agenda that we took off because of the election. Um, secondly, uh, Franz and Peter were invited to an executive session earlier today uh, where we began to sort of get up to speed collectively. Um, and then I guess thirdly, I'd be curious, you know, from John's perspective, like, you know, when we put this agenda together, it comes on this agenda because of requests from town staff for timely actions you know, so John, I don't know if you want to speak to like, what is it you need from us today that can't wait until April, was it April 4th? What they can't wait? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, this is an important project for the town and we felt like you wanted to keep working on it. And uh, we also, uh, you know, if, if, there's anything that you approve tonight that the new board doesn't want to do, you can always revisit it. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that's an option. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how we felt on it. Just yeah. basically we're, we're trying to move the town's business forward. Yeah. And we hope that this board would act responsibly, just like we know the next board would act responsibly. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think I want to just address one thing, Kate, um, the ultimate decision of, e of EMS is going to be decided by the new board. Right. All we're proposing is a is a very, very kind of broad direction that we're going in making in, in making decisions here. And uh, the new board is going to be on in six days and then are going to be part of this full discussion. And we're going to be talking about this many times in between. So, you know, I yeah, I think uh, 
and and the other uh, i'm not going to talk about arpa right now we can talk about it then but uh because it's a different agenda item um other board members want to speak to it before i move on to next uh, i definitely hear what kate's saying um as one of the outgoing members i also you know it's tempting to try to you know continue to make good impact when sometimes it's so hard to move in directions but this feels like like setting up the next board for success and not actually making a decision. However, I, you know, I hear that and I, I should point out that like originally this was supposed to be on the 14th. Yes. It didn't feel like a last moment thing happening. Um, and in my mind, I don't know if anybody else had this thought, but I kind of wanted a path, not any decisions made, but a path laid out before RTM because I thought that RTM might want to comment you know, Thank yep, you. that's a very important part. Of it. There's not a, you know, a clear role in this process yet, at least for RTM, but there's always, you know, gathering comments after this action is taken versus no action yet again taken, even though we're gathering data, et cetera. It just felt kind of clean to lay out a path for success. Please. I don't see this uh, path forward as any different from what we were charged with at the conclusion of the AP Triton analysis. This is just a practical method of deciding for ourselves what's best for our town as a reflection of, of what we were essentially told to do in the AP Triton report. And we're just doing it. And it's going to continue for quite some time. And so, you know, We've had a series of delays uh, for various reasons, but, you know, it's it's just not going to matter whether we start on this course now and the new board, um, you know, wants to tweak it. They're certainly welcome to. I, I don't think that there's really anything objectionable in here other than, you know, it's a straightforward um, course of action that has two lanes. Relates. Tim, it's a little unusual, but can I ask slash invite Kate for a follow up question from me? Is that all right with you? I'd prefer to keep moving along, but we is it brief? Because uh, that's very brief. Okay, it's very brief. I, I'm just hoping to get to the essence of what we're missing if we make a decision on a fire EMS service delivery approach tonight. What is it? Are we? Does anyone think that we're cutting off a possibility going forward? And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm just trying to. No, I just think that it's not for you folks to instruct or give guidance to the town staff on things like um, part of this is the schedule. What do we think about the timing? Who should we ask? They need to be involved in that. You're not going to be here. You're not going to be here. So, yeah, no, no, but but I'm yeah. saying all five of you aren't going to be here. And I think the issue is, and, you know, Liz just said, what does it make a difference if we do it now or in two weeks? That's my point. Do it in two weeks. Allow the two people that are going to be on the board to make these decisions. And I would have come up and have said this the right after the March election. I'm not just saying it for tonight. You happen to do it tonight. So I just don't understand why you folks are holding on that you have to make the decision. That's for me. They really should be involved in this. It's it. We're in the new phase for EMS. It's the moving forward phase. You folks, you know, did your jobs and it's time to turn it over to the next people. That's all I'm saying. I just think if it, if it, you know, it doesn't, if it doesn't matter if you do it now or in April, do it in April with the new people and allow them that breathing room and that, ability to talk to town staff about things. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. John? Well, I um, respectfully, I, I just think that there is a lot of town business that I've been made aware of. And if we stack up, if we keep stacking up all of our agenda items out into the future, it just gets harder and harder for staff to continue to put that together. It'd be great to be able to move forward on this and at least have some sense of what direction we should be moving in the next, in the next few weeks. Uh, yes. Just uh, hi, Franz Reichsman. Um, 
District 2, Brattleboro. Um, as one of the two people Kate's remarks are maybe most closely aligned with, I would like to thank her for really an important theoretical point. Um, however, being practical, as a practical matter, I haven't heard anything that I object to um, in terms of the planning to put together this process. What happens in the actual process, I certainly want to be part of. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, you, you know, theoretically, may, maybe I would have some other thought on the timeline, but I don't. And um, so I, personally, and I'm certainly not speaking for Peter, um, I've got no problem with the what discussion that I've heard here tonight and the proposal to, to move forward with it. Great. But thank you, Kate. I take that to heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Franz. Uh, I, I broke my rule and I did two in the room and I feel <laughs> guilty about it. I, uh, I, I had a hand uh, in Zoom land, I believe. And it's- I'm sorry. It's Bob, Ozer. Bob Ozer. Welcome, Bob. And I believe now I'm here. Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me. So, closer, and I am doing three. And, um, yeah, this, this discussion could go on for quite some time if we if we go to all this. But I, I'll try to make this very brief. Um, um, actually, listening to Kate, she kind of changed my mind, and I'm almost agreeing with her at this point. Uh, but... Looking, looking at the proposal that you have in the approach, um, I wonder whether the distinction between dedicated and regional, I think that the, the, the dialectic there, dedicated regional, is really a meaningful distinction. Um, I have a memo, page three on the memo, talks about uh, when you're contracted with rescue, that you would take over care on the scene. And some people, not myself, actually some people who looked at that had some concerns with language there um, because uh, they felt that there were conflicts on the ground that were unresolved in those transport situations or those taking over of care situations. And I submit to you that if those conflicts had been resolved in a timely and appropriate manner, we wouldn't be having this discussion today. And we wouldn't be needing to talk about this in such a general and academic way. This really is about patient care, even the Triton region had to admit that the level of care was a common denominator among the duty service delivery models. And the only issue here was a breakdown of relationship. So putting all of this stuff aside, we need to mend that relationship. Um, moving on to the, to the and, and the regional and the dedicated there's actually a lot of literature out there about how the real model is better. And we can give you that uh, due course if you want it. Um, that word guarantee was disturbing to some folks as well, because I think even if it was appropriately used, I think in the sentence which it was used, it seemed to indicate that somehow you would get a guarantee because of the model. And I think we spoke briefly to this, that, you know, it's not a business where you can always get guarantees. Uh, I, I very shortly. Thank you. Uh, how much more time do I have? Uh, you are at three minutes. Um, so I just ask you to wrap up. So re here's the reasonable question rather than the guarantee question. Was there ever a time when you missed a call during the period that were contracted with Brattleboro? Okay, thank you very much. I think we kind of spoke to this already, but- um, they, they didn't miss a call, but we've sat on scene for 20 to 30 minutes waiting for an ambulance. Uh, Daniel? 
<clears throat> yeah, I just kind of want to say that speaking about somebody's comment that's not being present in the meeting, especially somebody that purports to have, I don't know, firsthand knowledge of how things went down, I find unhelpful. Um, you know, if there are people in the community who have firsthand knowledge of how something went down and they feel that it went down inappropriately, it would really be helpful for those people to bring that information here. You know, if they don't feel like not everybody loves coming to a public meeting or feels confident coming to a public meeting, they can certainly email that information to the town manager's office. They're welcome to email it to the select board, you know, because what Bob is kind of bringing into a conversation is secondhand information that it is hard to verify, you know, um, and I can't make a decision. I mean, we're not making a decision about any of that stuff tonight anyway, but, you know, were we, it's really hard to do that. Um, so I would urge Mr. Oza, if there are people who have information that they think is relevant to the conversation to bring that information forward, you know, um, that's fine. I, you know, we will make the best decision with the most information, you know, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I hope you're, uh, okay. Back to the room. Um, any other hands? Going once, going twice, and I don't see any hands on Zoom. All right, board members, uh, other questions or comments on this at this time? I guess I want to speak to Kate's thing finally. Like, I, sorry, um, I hear you, Kate. I hear you from a perception point of view. I hear you. Um, Ian, Liz, and myself will serve on this board. If Jessica and Tim abstain from this next motion, um, we could still accomplish the intent of the motion tonight in an entirely reasonable way. Um, the only thing that is lost by delaying, um, what are we, it's a couple of weeks out, right? So we lose two weeks of time um, to continue to move this process forward. It's a process that is complex. And the town manager's office, quite frankly, um, is extremely busy with and has been, you know. Um, and so we're asking them to all of a sudden pause that process. And other than a concern about perception, I see no material reason why we should do that today. Okay, uh, other board members? Okay, uh, and I don't see any other hands and I'm giving room one more time. Yes. Peter Case, Brattleboro. Um, I guess I see the benefit voting on this thing and putting a path forward. I see Kate's point about delaying it and transferring the decision to the next board. Um, perception is been a big part of what has created a lot of the rift. There's a word on the street, on a street level, perception is not good. It's all about messaging. We've all heard me talk about messaging. So if there really isn't, other than the excuse that we're busy, we're all busy. Ian, you, you came through the door tonight like you were on fire because you were busy. So we're, we all get busy. I, I understand that. So if there is truly no harm in, in delaying it until an April meeting, then I would advocate for that. I, I would also advocate, this is like weird, like I can't make a decision on this one, of saying that the, the well, as presented tonight, I don't hate that either. But for perceptions reasons, <laughs> well, I mean, but perception Right now, we pass this thing tonight, it looks bad. You don't pass this thing tonight, you push it to the next board and it pushes and, and we pass it. Maybe it still looks bad, but maybe we had two more people that the town of Brattleboro voted in helping make that decision. Just two schools of thought. Great. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, Tim. If you're moving towards the vote, I just want to say one last thing. I kind of, you know, I. Thank you for the abstain suggestion because I hate abstaining for anything because it's not a it's non-committal, right? Um, but this might make sense to me in this moment. 
Um, but I do want to say that that argument would hold a lot more weight. The perception argument would hold a lot more weight if three people had been elected to me. New people, mm-hmm. not two. <laughs> it's a it, it's a big difference to me. Let's just no, 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 no. Not I don't want to go. Going. He won't let me go. I'm back not going to do that. But um, I'm I'm I think I'm going to abstain because I do get concerned about perception and it's pretty complicated. However, if you were going to go that route, you could make an argument for anything on our agenda shouldn't be decided tonight. And that's a ridiculous position to take. So. Although. What? It may come up. Elsewhere in the agenda. Correct. Okay. Uh, other board members want to speak on this? Yes, Ooh, Jess? Oh, boy. So we just blow, yeah. blow past <laughs> any, <laughs> any hopes that I... Uh, it was always my intention to abstain oh, in fact, no. on this vote. You're way ahead of me. Um, and, uh, and I do believe that it's important to preserve the integrity of this process moving forward. And I do believe that the integrity is maintained by three members of this board moving it forward and continuing on the board with the new two members to continue this process forward. So I'm going to be abstaining. And um, yeah, I also think it's important to recognize that we are elected to a full year of service. Mm -hmm. And just because there's been an election doesn't mean that we can't continue serving and making decisions and helping staff with policy in our last month of service. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh God, I can't refrain from. Uh, and I think I would just say that um, if the lame duck period of a select board member is something that the town dislikes, it's in the charter and we can change the charter. And in fact, we can, we are currently reviewing the charter. And I think that that would be um, something to consider um, because that would be something that we could change. Except we do have to serve Saturday where we defend our budget. Mm-hmm. True, but I think that that could be handled. You know, it's just that that's why we have it this way. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I think in that case, um, absent any other, I don't see any other hands. Um, I'm willing to entertain a motion. Liz. I move to direct the administration to pursue parallel tracks of information gathering, cost analysis, and risk assessment necessary to develop a preferred alternative service delivery model for either contracting EMS services to an external party or developing a full municipal fire EMS capability for select work consideration by September 2023. Liz has made a motion to direct the administration to pursue parallel tracks of information gathering, cost analysis, and risk assessment necessary to develop a preferred alternative service delivery model for either contracting EMS services to an external party or developing a full municipal fire EMS capability for select board consideration by September 2023. Remembering that I've got interpreters who are trying to keep up with that. I apologize. Um, Board members, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, All those opposed? Uh, all those abstaining. Okay, uh, the motion passes three uh, zero two. Uh, three four zero against two abstentions. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you both to. Uh, I think you guys are sticking up here yes. with us, uh, and we're going and to John. Thank you for that presentation. We're going to move on to agenda item eight B, which is the uh, fire department effective response force uh, set standard proposal. Um, And I think I'm also turning this over to John. Yes, thank you, Ian. Um, So this item is about establishing assumptions about effective response force for fire suppression as we move forward with this process to look at the various uh, models that the select board could consider in September of 2023. Uh, This was an issue raised by AP Triton in their report. Uh, The memo uh, in your back. Up materials discusses what effective response force is. Uh, it also d- describes what the national standard is and what is possible in Brattleboro under various scenarios. I will uh, turn it over to the chief for for any um, further explanation on that. But basically, we're looking for uh, an, uh, an underlying assumption around effective response force. So as 
the AP Triton report identified our fire response, effective response force is in dire need of being addressed. Um, me, what that means is NFPA 1710 says for a structure fire, just a regular house fire, you should have at least 16 to 17 people on the scene within nine to 10 minutes. The first engine should arrive with a minimum of four people on scene within four minutes, and the second engine should arrive on scene in six minutes with four people. Prior to July 1, when we were doing first response with Rescue Inc., if we had two medical calls going on at the same time, which is very, as our data shows, it's, it's quite often. If a structure fire came in at that time, we would have the ability to have three people on a fire truck to a structure fire. Since July 1st, with the addition of the hybrid model and Golden Cross being in the station, we now have nine people um, with four with uh, four people committed to uh, two EMS calls, allowing for five people to be on uh, two different trucks. One of the things that Rich identified in, this, in the AP Triton is, is we need to set standards. And one of the standards, as this memo states, is we want it so we have six firefighters at a minimum rolling into a structure fire. And let me tell you why. Fire grows 16 times the size in a three minute period. And after that, it keeps growing and growing and growing faster. So you pick up the phone and call 911, tell them that your house is on fire. You're looking at a minute, a minute and a half before they take the call, the information, and they put out the tone and tell us to go. So you're into two or three minutes there. Now you're, now we got to respond. You're looking at another four to six minutes, and then we show up with two people on the truck. We're already behind the eight ball. We're entering a situation that's, that's not safe. Um, have we been doing it? Yes, and we've been lucky. So my point is, um, the International City Managers Association did a study on uh, five-person engine companies, four-person engine companies, and three-person engine companies. The things that they looked at was life safety of the occupants and the firefighters, confining and extinguishing the fire, property conservation, and reducing the adverse environmental impact to the, to the people. A five-person engine company was able to accomplish that 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. A four-person engine company could do it 65% of the time. And a three-person engine company could do it 38% of the time. So you can see why the people make the difference. The other thing people doesn't re realize is, is these trucks don't run themselves. One of those guys is running the truck. So each truck that you see that pulls up, that one person's assigned to that truck to run the truck to get water to the hoses and so on and so forth. The officer's responsibility when he gets off the truck is to do a 360 degree walk around of the building to size up what he has and to determine the type of a um, attack that he's gonna do on the fire. So if you roll up with two people, that's not good. At least if you roll up with three people, while the pump operator is getting his truck ready, the officer is doing his 360 degree walk around. At least that other firefighter is getting the line stretched to either the front door or the side door to be ready to go where the officer tells him to go. But that other fourth person, having that four people really makes it much better because now you're allowing two people to go on into the, with a hose line. We are also abide by OSHA regulations, which if we pull up the building and somebody comes out and says, yes, um, my father's in the building. We don't have to abide by the OSHA regulation of two in and two out. We, can, we don't have to obey to that because it's a life safety issue. But when there's not a life safety issue, we cannot go inside with two people 
unless we got two people standing outside ready to come in to rescue us. I know I've said a lot here, but I'm making I want you to understand the importance of having staffing on fire trucks. And I'm sure you've all read posts and things on social media that my staff is very tired and overworked. I can't disagree with them. As I've stated in the last few meetings, we haven't changed our staffing in 30 years. Our call staff has dropped. We have no call staff. When I joined the fire department in 1987, we had at least 30 call staff. That makes a huge difference, especially when those 30 call people lived in town and a, a structure fire came in. They got here quick to help us get that effective response. We rely on our neighbors for mutual aid, yes, but they're in the same boat. If you hear about volunteer fire departments, they're having a hard time staffing their, their departments, and God bless it. So we don't know whether we're getting two people from a town or five or six people. It depends on the time of day. My only guarantee that I know at least five people are coming on a truck is Keene, New Hampshire, and Greenfield, Mass. Those are my two guarantees. I, I know my other volunteer mutual aid departments are going to come, but I don't know what they're going to come with. So those are some, some considerations to, to really think about. And I can't urge you enough, as you know, um, in this memo, it states that we're, we would like to see three people added by June. Um, the town manager has come up with a great idea to fund those positions. And I certainly hope that you hear what I'm saying and you, and you take action on helping us get the staffing for our people to, to allow them for a little time off, allow them to work safely doing their job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chief Howard. I just want to, uh, the call staff that you were referring to, that's like volunteer firefighters uh, yep. in yep. town yep. who would work with our professional. They're firefighters. on our department. Yeah. Um, yep. And that was sort of a, a thing of the past now yep. um, for various reasons. Um, okay. Um, did you have more, John? No, um, we were just looking for a motion from you to set this minimum standard here as a goal. So. Yeah, uh, so board members, uh, questions, comments? Uh, Liz. Um, I understand what we're looking for here, but I don't think it's been brought down into the practical nature of exactly how many firefighters. Can you speak? Sorry, say it I, I don't think that we've heard how this translates into a number of firefighters that we wish to hire. Well, uh, yes, I agree with that because this is just simply a goal for maintaining this amount in going forward. Um, so it would depend on what the status of the department was and that the discussion for, um, how many we're looking to, uh, hire as chief Howard spoke to is more of a discussion in the ARPA, um, item, but we can, I don't know if it makes sense to sort of keep it to that and just discuss about the standard for right now. If you like. Uh, Jess? I think the standard as a whole makes a lot of sense, especially hearing about what it is like to operationalize those people at a scene um, and the need for at least six people on scene seems pretty clear um, to do all the jobs that there are to do on a scene. Um, I think this is one of the, the outcomes um, before we started investigating changes in EMS, this is one of the outcomes that I think we were anticipating might come out of a strategic planning process for the fire department. And this is great information to have to set sort of a standard moving forward. And was the first X number of pages of the AP Triton report was about simply standards for the fire department. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Jess. Other board members, Daniel? I guess I'm, I'm just kind of curious about the history. So, yeah. <clears throat> you know, this NFPA standard, I recall Rich speaking to that as, but that's, that's a high standard. And we've, 
we've never met that standard. And I would never expect you to hire 17 people. Right. Sure. Um, and so for how long have we been staff to the extent that we are? Um, and why now? Why are we changing now? We, the, the big thing changed in 2000 when we started doing first response that, that took two people off the, the fire truck and commits them to a, a medical emergency. And as you know, when we get one medical emergency in the town, we typically get a second medical emergency. It's just, just the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're committing two more people to that. So if we're full shifted with a shift of seven, you got three back at the station to go to that fire call. Most days with FMLA, sick time, vacation time, uh, somebody's out training, we're typically down to six people. It's very minimal that we've got this full 70. Um, so it's it's... It's been an issue for a long time. It's it's just it's, be, it's come out in a report to identify and right. as a goal for the strategic plan that was budgeted. Just is absolutely right. That was one of the main things that the assistant chief and I were looking at to come out of this strategic report was to to show that our staffing needs improving. Right. And I've been on the board now for four years, and you've been chief, I think, to three of those, maybe? Two. Two. Jeez, it's been a long two years then. Um, <laughs> that's no disrespect to you. That's just, this, that's, those two years have been long. Um, has this been something that you've been wanting to see addressed in budgets that, you know, we've worked on over the last couple of years? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And in like fire fighter negotiations over collective bargaining, is this mm -hmm. something that the union has sought to address? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're kind of catching up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. And we know that if we were to, um, you know, approve this motion, which would set a minimum effective response force of six, um, we know that that's still pretty far short of that mm -hmm. NFPA standard. Mm hmm and I guess it's worth pointing out that we're currently in collective. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, <laughs> that we're currently in collective bargaining negotiations right. with um, three different unions right now. Three, four. four. Thank you. Four different unions. One of which is the Five Fighters Union. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I am in favor of us setting a goal that is adequate to meet our um, all hazards responses right because the fire department responds to a lot of things uh are we prepared to check in uh and ensure that this goal of six is sufficient and um if it needs to be modified that that gets to the board in a timely way yeah i think that part of that's going to be identified moving forward with the, how whatever process of the ems whether you know if, if we have to go in-house if we have to go Hybrid, if we have to go back to just a third party contractor, those are different situations, but um, how we are, how they're going to be addressed and funded is, is a key. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Um, Tim, I think you had a little hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't sure how to formulate it, but um, so I'm in favor of this. It seems like a safe thing to do uh, and wise, but it's my last meeting. So how would you respond to somebody who said to you, um, yes. you know, if the select board hadn't been so dumb and messed up their relationship with rescue, you need these extra people. Why don't we just go completely to an EMS provider and firefighters can just fight fires? In other words, how would you respond? Because, how would I respond? Yeah. One that... Um, we're still going to go to as long as I'm fire chief, and if and if we don't, if you opt to go with a third party um, vendor, like we did prior to mm -hmm. the 2000 uh, July of this year, we will always do first response to to a medical emergency. And why is that? Why is that? Because our people, my staff, is not going to sit there 
when somebody's having a heart attack or stroke that's two or three minutes away from us that we can go and help and save their life and sit there because there's a third party um, contractor that's coming. It's just not, it's not sensible and it's not the right thing to do. And I will do that. Thank you. Other board members? Good answer. <laughs> uh, board members, other ones before me? Uh, okay, uh, Dick, I see your hand up uh, on Zoom first. Then I'm going to go to the room. And I just want to let people know I'm, I'm aiming for uh, a quick break after this agenda item um, reasonably soon. Trying to get myself, uh, we all set? Yes, I can see you. You are kind of see you. You're in the dark, kind of, but. There you there go. go. <laughs> let there be light. Ah, I was going to um, say if you didn't. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the conversation that you're having, I, I, dis, I support the conversation. I'm disappointed when this conversation's happening. Why didn't this conversation happen during the budget process uh, when it should have been addressed? Because the chief actually talked about, and you can see it if you look in the documents uh, that are in your agenda here about using $350,000, and the chief talked about getting these people on staff by June. One would think that you have town meeting in five days that you would address uh, making an amendment to the budget for additional staff. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with the standard, I'm disagreeing with the timing of the conversation to add three people and then using the funding source that you're looking to do later on in this agenda. And I, and I think it's really highly inappropriate where you could accomplish the same thing uh, Saturday and if it gets voted down and then you can come back and use ARPA money if it, if it is defeated uh, at town meeting. Uh, so Dick, oh. I, I just want to pause you a second. Cause I think that's a very appropriate conversation for the ARPA part of this discussion, which we're going to talk about a little later. Um, I, but I, I uh, actually I really appreciate it. And I think we should have a thorough discussion about that proposal, but let's have that at the ARPA right now. We're just talking about the standards. I, well, yeah, but why wasn't then answer this question? What, you had the Trident report in December then why wasn't this discussion had during the budget process? There was certainly ample time to say we should be changing the standard and we're looking to get three people on staff, not doing it the last meeting and, that we're having in March. That's, that's a fair question. Yeah, I think that's relevant to this item for sure. Um, Jess? Um, so I think it's important to note that this, whatever change may happen based on this, it's going to be a transition in the next year. And it's not gonna, it won't necessarily need to be operationalized in the general fund budget until we know what direction we're going in. There are two options in John's plan, the comprehensive EMS model um, that we wouldn't actually need to add um, additional staff for. And then the if the fire department took EMS in-house, um, there would be a different funding model for those positions. So I think right now, I think is a great time to talk about it because it's, it's not part of the general fund budget. It's not part of how we're going to operate for the rest of forever. It is transition. Are there a board member, Liz? And by transition, I think what we need, mean is that we, it's an anomaly. <laughs> it's, it's a one shot, one time effort that is not part of the regular annual budget process. It's a need that's come up in review of the AP Triton report and consideration. And I think it's appropriate that we discuss it in a different way. Uh, other board members? 
Uh, I, I take the criticism. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, I always feel like we should be discussing things sooner than we do because we are, um, yeah, we're always got things coming up. So, um, but, uh, you know, I also think it's really important that we discuss it now. So um, that's all I've got on it. Um, other board members want to speak on that before I look to other members of the public? I, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a conflation, and I understand it because the one followed from the other. But um, you know what we're talking about right now is setting a goal, right? And if we set this goal, then it's incumbent upon us to figure out how to achieve that goal, and we could achieve it in a variety of means. Um, we may disagree about that later. Yeah, but I think that it's important that we set the goal. Agreed. Um, all right, uh, members of the public. Before I uh, turn this over to the board for vote, yes. Uh, Franz Schreiksman. Um Chief Howard, um, you gave three figures, 100%, 65%, and 38% that corresponded to five people, four people, and three people responding. But I can't remember what the percentage was of, 100% of what happened or 65% happened. Of those four things that I that I listed off, the, the life safety of occupants of, uh, of the occupants and firefighters, Confining and extinguishing the fire, um, property cons conservation, in other words, saving the, the buildings around the built the fire that's the building it's on fire is, is exposures, and then reducing the adverse environment impact that could possibly come from. Is do you have some is there a reference where that came from? I, I'd yep. be interested in learning more about it. I will. I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Um now the other thing I'm not quite clear on is it seems to me that I read in the AP Triton study that the staffing now is a captain, two lieutenants, and four firefighters on each shift. So that's seven mm -hmm. people available. Now, if two of them are on EMS calls, if if things were fully staffed, then there'd be five available to respond mm -hmm. to a fire. Right. Is, is that right? So um, – I, I, I'm having trouble squaring that with some of your remarks about how only two or three people show up. Because sometime. you've got to take the, you could be out on a, a medical call now and another medical call comes in. So you're sending another truck to that medical call. So now you have four people committed to a medical emergency, two different medical emergencies. Two of those firefighters are at that emergency. W but w wouldn't it be one firefighter and an EMT from one of the contract agencies at this point? This was prior. That's now. But okay. prior to that, it was two firefighters in each vehicle that want first response. OK, um, well, I, I think maybe what you can see is that I'm having a little difficulty getting all the numbers lined up right. I don't know if there's some document. I, I'm I'm better at this if I have something on a piece mm -hmm. of paper to to work out. Yep. Um so, you know, I'm just, there's been a lot of numbers thrown around. I'm having trouble fitting them all together. Um, and it leads me to wonder, do we need a different staffing model or do we just need more staff with the model that we have now? That, that's a tough question. If there's actually two answers to it, yes and yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll really be looking forward to learning more about fire services because yes. that's not my strength. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank you very much, Franz. Uh, Daniel. I just want to say table one kind of speaks to some of what you were just talking about and table two. Yeah. In the memo. Pages three and five. Tell me you don't have it in front. Right. Three, three, oh, I'm sorry. Three and four. <laughs> um, and those questions, that, those other questions that you yeah, talked about are collective bargaining active questions yeah that's why i kind of said yes <laughs> um okay uh any other members of the public now um if not i'm gonna look to a uh motion from the board unless there's other discussion on this item yes i can make this motion. oh great I'm excited to make this motion excited to make a motion <laughs> great i move that we set a goal of maintaining a fire suppression effective response force of six firefighters when there are two active EMS calls, regardless of which fire and EMS service delivery model is ultimately chosen by the select board. 
Justice made a motion to set a goal of maintaining a fire suppression effective response force of six firefighters when there are two active EMS calls, regardless of which fire or EMS service delivery model is ultimately chosen by the select board. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's going to carry 5-0. And with that, we're going to pause here and take a quick five-minute break, uh, and we'll reconvene at right around 8.15-ish. So we're going to reconvene the Brattleboro Select Board meeting. Uh, it's 8.19. Um, okay, uh, so oh, I need to gather my things here. Uh, we're going to move on to new business agenda item 8C, which is the Community Safety Fund discussion and update. Um, board members, this one is going to be mine. Um, so there was a brief uh, uh, memorandum provided to the board and the community. Uh, in it was referenced an attachment, which were the Community Safety Report Recommendations 13 through 18. Unfortunately, that attachment did not get into the backup material. So there are there were copies provided to the board in front of them. There are copies right up on the table there. And um, it is uh, the, uh, it's part of the chart that um, town manager Elwell made um, and is available on the website. Um, and I'm not quite sure where um, for people following it's on the home home page. It's on the home page. Yeah, okay. In that list of things on the and so and so it's the 13 through 18 so it would be the pages that have those recommendations on it um and i'm just letting people sort of distribute those out for a moment and it is small and, they are and, very and we apologize for the small print but the library is getting a grant for a, a very powerful magnifier yes we learned about that um okay so board uh uh i think uh, everyone here was on the board for elements of the community safety discussion that began back in 2020. Um, these, uh, this discussion led to uh, the um, hiring of um, consultants and the um, selection of a committee of volunteers to engage the community in a dialogue um, and look at um, essentially community safety in the town of Brattleboro. Um, the report uh, was presented to the board on the 5th of January 20, I don't think that's actually correct, but um, 2021. 2021, I think that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, and in it were uh, a variety of recommendations, considerations. Um, the board uh, has adopted some of those recommendations, has um, uh, has uh, sort of identified them as policy decisions that need to be made in the future. And then there are some that are uh, more sort of goals or things to consider moving forward. Um, an element of that discussion, uh, uh, more from the town side, was providing some funding for consideration of some of those recommendations. Specifically, I think the town's looking at 13 through 18, but you know that's for discussion tonight. The fund started with... Um, 200,000 in FY22, uh, another 100,000 in FY23, an additional proposed 50 grand in, for the FY24 budget. So we're really talking about $300,000 tonight because uh, the additional 50 is um, only pursuant to RTM's decision on Saturday. So um, what the hope for tonight is to have a conversation with the board and the community on exactly what are the next steps on this uh, funding um, uh, and this uh, pot of money? Um, I I think there are kind of a variety of discussions that have happened among community members. Uh, I know uh, we've gotten emails from people, but uh, you know, my hope would be to sort of hear from board members because we haven't talked about this in the public in a while um, and uh, hear sort of where people are at and then I'd love to hear from members of the community to hear their perspective. And then as far as goals in moving this uh, to next steps, I would just like wherever we land, I just would like to provide some very clear guidance to the town manager's office on sort of where the board wants to take the, this going forward. Um, so, uh, and, and finally, I would just like to say that um, I'm very grateful for um, John uh, stepping into this role and looking at this um, very important issue. One of the reasons that we have sort of been delayed in this process has simply been capacity and bandwidth in the town manager's office um, for um, 
a lot of different reasons. And so this is, we're finally getting back to a place where we're able to start this important work again. And I'm, I'm glad to be having this discussion with the board. Um, so thank you, John, for that. Um, uh, so board members, um, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, you all first. Um, uh, and I'd like to keep it in the realm of the Community Safety Fund um, and thoughts on kind of where you're seeing next steps here. I have some thoughts myself, but I will leave it uh, to board members first. Liz, did I see your hand? Yes. The invisible hand. The invisible hand. Yeah, I um, appreciate um, John Potter's suggestion that, well, first of all, we promised uh, the town, the public, that we would provide uh, opportunity for them to present ideas uh, and as John put it, for outside organizations to see what they're capable of, and we'll never know unless we ask. And so I support his suggestion that we um, utilize town staff and perhaps consultants to solicit, organize, and provide a basic review of these initiatives, whatever they are, to make sure that they're legal and they complement the existing municipal services. And um, I think this is uh, a great unknown that we do not know what initiatives are out there. I know of some, and I think maybe we all know of some, but unless we hear about them, I don't think that we can uh, decide what to do with that fund. Great, thank you, Liz. Other board members, Daniel? Thanks. Um, I'm going to put a timer on so I don't go too long. <laughs> going to try and aim for three minutes and we'll see how we do. Wow. Can we make that a policy? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so I just want to kind of let the public in on why this is even on the agenda today. Um, because on December 12th, Jessica emailed Ian and I to say sh uh, that she would like uh, an agenda item. And I'm kind of embarrassed by saying that date, honestly. Um to discuss the community safety fund allocation process. I guess, furthermore, last spring, this board set as one of its goals, um, developing a transparent, accountable, accessible process and equitable as well um, for that fund. We didn't get to it. Um, and we're probably not about to get to it right now, but we I wanna make sure as part of the agenda setting committee that it gets on an agenda I wanted it to be on an agenda sooner than today, but circumstances got in the way um, because there were always other more kind of time sensitive pressing needs. Um, so we're at one minute, seven seconds. Um, so we're discussing the community safety fund today, but the community safety fund cannot be just kind of discussed on its own because it actually comes out of a process that led to the community safety report and recommendations the fund was actually never a recommendation, you know. Um, it was gratefully received, I think, by this board who was looking to operationalize some of um, the recommendations. If we get the 350,000, we know that 350,000 will be insufficient to um, operationalize stuff from this report. You know, at best, I think what we've imagined, and we haven't really had many public conversations about this, so I'm saying we imagine this based on like conversations I've had with, you know, one or two board members here or there over a cup of coffee, um, that we would maybe solicit ideas for proposals that are in line with the community safety recommendations. And to this board member, I would imagine that those would be pilot projects. Maybe we'd be matching money that they're, you know, some other organizations are raising. And that's all well and good. And I can imagine why we would go about and do that. Um, I've also had conversations with community members that were involved in this um, report process and who are deeply invested in this kind of work that is transformational and that's about building alternatives to policing. Um, I think that it's clear from our lack of action on it that we haven't really had capacity to move forward. That's not an attack at anybody, including ourselves. I think there are circumstances, but there isn't really a home for this work in the town government. Um, I do believe that this board is committed to what's in that report because we said that we were in a public meeting. And I know that that commitment, you know, is going to 
lead towards us trying to operationalize as much of this as we can for the benefit of the people of the town. And I know that it's going to be really challenging. And so what I'd like to do is ask for help. Okay. And I would like to ask for help in a way that other towns and cities in our area and across the country have done by creating either a department or at the bare minimum, a department of one, uh, which would be, you know, uh, a staff person whose job it was, was to bring forward every day this work. Um, it's a little similar to what we've asked for around the sustainability coordinator. That was a conversation we had a number of years back. Northampton has a department of community care um, that is trying to do the same sort of thing. Amherst has a program called CRESS, which is similar. Um, Durham, North Carolina came up the other day as an example. Um, and I believe from John that Boulder, Colorado, John's previous employer, is also doing something similar within their town government. There are other examples that are outside of town government. There's the Cahoots um, program in Eugene, Oregon. And I believe Burlington, Vermont has been doing uh, some work with kind of outreach people on the streets. I I'm not educated enough to know much about that right now. Um, so I would like to propose that we consider using some amount of this uh, potentially 350,000 to establish a department within town government to move this work forward, to take it off a town manager's plate, who is an excellent town manager and is doing a great job, but his plate is already extremely full. And with the best respect to John, does not necessarily have the subject matter expertise in this area. And so I would like us to engage subject matter experts so that we can make progress on this. Oh, that's a really long three minutes. Uh, uh, it's it's just, exactly. so, oh, that's not bad. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, other board members? Jess had her hand up first. Sure. Um, so we have talked about safety this year, though. We've talked about um, people's feelings of unsafeness downtown and the Absolutely. transportation center. And we just approved a $70,000 bid to replace cameras in the transportation center to address that safety concern. So we were able to do that because there is infrastructure around that spending. There is a police department to look at the cameras. There are facilities folks to take care of the cameras. There's a parking fund to fund that. When we're talking about this $350,000 for the community safety fund, there's there's no infrastructure around that money and that spending other than our goal of um, finding alternatives to policing, meeting people's basic needs, building up alternatives to policing and other police-like safety responses. So I think that Creating a department is an incredibly helpful idea, not only to continue our commitment to the action plan that was presented in the community safety review, um, but also to, um, to bring in the expertise that the town really needs that elected select board members and current town leadership doesn't have to really commit to this and take this on. I think at some points in the process, there have been some pieces that have been either slid over to the police department, um, which seems a little antithetical to, um, to our goal of developing alternatives to policing and taking things off of their plate to, um, to support increased community safety. And I just want to read one of the nine key findings from the community safety review, which um, sort of changes a little bit my understanding of what safety is and defines it a little bit differently than how we've been talking about safety this year, safety downtown, safety in the parking garage. Um, finding number eight says, poverty, homelessness, lack of belonging, lack of ability to meet basic needs were consistently named as some of the largest threats to our community's well-being and safety. And voluntary support, mutual aid, 
projects led by marginalized people and basic needs like safe housing, good food, and places for belonging and connection are widely recognized as some of the biggest current safety needs in our community. Yeah. Um, so I think developing infrastructure around this and making a, a institutional commitment to this work is essential to moving forward. And that 350 is a great place to start. Great, thank you very much. Jess, uh, Tim, any, any uh, thoughts or? Sure. Uh, so. Yeah. I don't mean to put you on the spot, I apologize. No, no, that's fine. It's just, I'm a little bit, I feel like I missed some a meeting but I don't think I have. Um, so I thought this was a general discussion and giving some guidance to town staff as to what direction the board may or may not want to go. Yeah, and I'm hearing um, basically at the moment sort of two uh, directions towards uh, a staff member or a department that there, there's, there's um, sorry to interrupt you, uh, uh, but- No, I'm happy to- Yeah, I, I'm hearing, I'm hearing um, similarities between two sides here of wanting expertise to discuss this. Um, one side from, uh, 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 I'm, I'm not quite sure, Liz, the term you used. Um, like an I would an like- RFP process for- uh, No, not necessarily as formal as an RFP process. The, we promised the community that there would be a select board meeting where people could present their proposals for community safety alternatives. And what I'm hearing from the other side of the table is a decision that was already made to go in a certain direction. And so I, th I think it's a very, very clear difference of opinion as to, but I'm saying that we promised the community that we would listen to their, their alternatives and, and then decide how to how the money is best spent and i think you guys have already decided on an alternative um yes Ooh. and then i will get back to tim. Uh, okay i don't know tim <laughs> no i'm just trying to keep up yeah just just to respond to that liz i think i imagine that this wouldn't cut off a community process for other allocations I think that this could operate in some of the same ways the finance department operates when we do small business loans and grants. They work with folks that are interested in accessing this money to develop their proposals, and then those proposals come before the select board. It would not sort of undercut that step in the process, but it, it would be somebody who's got the expertise and the leadership and the ability to pull different partners together to make successful proposals happen. Liz? Well, um, I have, you know, right in the in the next item in the ARPA funding, there's the um, mobile crisis team design suggestion. I have a, a thing paper here from HCRS with a variety of similar sounding uh, things that would be actually outside of town government, but working with town government. Um, it, there's a variety of things. I, I see I see John Elwell here. He has a, a program that he's deciding. And there's a lot of people in the community that, um, you know, we've promised an airing before we spend the money on a dedicated staff employee. Mm -hmm. And I think once we have a dedicated employee uh, that, in turn perpetuates until we either we use up all our money or, or or as I received an email today promoting this becomes a defund the police argument, which I'm not at all happy about. Unfortunately, these don't uh, magnify at all. They're just for BCTV, but um, a fair point. Let's just all speak up when we're speaking to everybody. Um, um, so yeah, uh, is this starting to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
uh, yeah, I think it's, ba- it's basically a question of how to utilize the funds and um, basically expertise is necessary because we don't have it in the town at the moment. Um, and so that, oh, okay, yes. Then let me just give you my thoughts. Yes, um, that's... Where somebody, I guess a couple people on the board have, is moving forward a little quickly in my opinion, mm-hmm. because we haven't yet really had the discussion of how does everybody feel about I mean, attached to the memo and not to, you know, criticize, it's just community safety report recommendations 13 through 18, which are interesting ones, but they need to be discussed. They are all, as I read them in my very difficult way right now, um, they are all sort of areas of government that we don't do as a town government. Um so that's the first question to ask if we're going to get people's input is what, and it's a question I love to ask people when I'm out somewhere, what do you want government to do for you? And if you want it to do more than it currently does, all the traditional stuff that we immerse ourselves in at the board level, um, how are we going to pay for it? And are we duplicating services, for instance? Um I personally, I mean, this is my last meeting. I don't believe the town would make a very good social service agency. I don't see any evidence of that. And I think we have very strong social service agencies in this town already with a lot of expertise. So certainly if the town was going to consider becoming sort of a quasi social service agency, which is kind of what I'm hearing when we're talking about setting up a department, this is why I feel like a little dizzy department like that's that hasn't been warned. And we haven't even warned that we're going to be spending this money. So it seems like there's been some conversation that's that didn't involve me, which is OK. It happens. Um, yeah. So like I'm actually and there were some emails flying around and at the last minute, which drives me crazy, but whatever. Um <laughs> Some of the ideas I'm pretty excited about, like uh, there are some cities that are doing some exciting things, um, but we have to understand how they would work here, how we would translate that into a tiny town, not a city. We're not Boulder. Um, <laughs> oh, no, you could have said that a little louder. It sounded a little, uh, I don't know, wistful. Or um, <laughs> he loves it. Hey, come on. And, and uh, you know, we never really had the open, honest conversation about, you know, the phrase that was used when this uh, set of recommendations came forward was we accept the recommendations. We thank the committee. Um, they were a committee that served, of course, at the, at the pleasure of the select board, and, and they were disp- thanked and disbanded. Then it was really incumbent upon us to take all of these. How many were there? 30? 41. 41. 41. Um, I don't because I appreciate the community's work and I appreciate the sentiment and and really try. I feel like the police, I agree, want to not always be the ones that have to deal with Mm -hmm. so many things that we've been talking about these years. Um, I almost lost my train of thought. Um, So we uh, have to have the conversation about what in these recommendations we're going to move forward with and what are just dead on arrival. We've sort of danced around it for years, um, but it was a flawed process, in my opinion. Um, It did a lot of good work. The committee did a lot of good work, Um, but it's not like here are your, here is your instructions going forward that was handed to the board. It was kind of, you know, a mess. And we have, it's our job to get that mess together, get the vision together. Um, And it's not the job of hiring somebody to say, here, this one person or this three people create a bureaucracy that suddenly then has the power to decide. It's almost like we're not even doing our jobs if we're, if we're just going to create this. From what I understand, you're, uh, I'm not sure it's a proposal, just an idea. Um, So I really feel like it's not there yet. And I don't want to like go down the road of criticizing the process and the community safety report and some of the things that happened in that time, because I lived it. And I'd rather just move forward with 
the good ideas, whatever we think those good ideas mm -hmm. are. Some of which I find very exciting and some of the, I'd like to have the next board look at other towns, what they're doing. Yeah. And then maybe a couple meetings down the road, if if the community is feeling like, oh yeah, we need a department because we just don't have the capacity to do that. And that's, sounds pretty cool. And we can also get to a place tonight where we're just giving some direction to like what the next steps on yeah. are on. Yeah. I just, we, we need, we need to have a conversation about this and, and, you know, to the public here, it's a little messier, right? When we have a lot less direction mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the board has to sort of Absolutely. It's all off, and that's part of it. No so. one likes to see the sausages being made. Yeah. Um, but I just do, I just want to leave it. Let Tim I, can, I can actually leave it because I mean, you know, it's, we're taking off, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd rather you, you kick in more than me on this, but I just wanted to leave with like what struck me when the really the only backup is the safety attachments, which I've read before. But when you look at all of those, they really are begging a discussion about what do our constituents want our town to do? Oh, Great. Ian, I, oh uh, I don't know who had there. I, I saw. I, well, let me know? just add to what Tim said. Okay. And that, you know, th these, these, uh, this page of recommendations taken in isolation, um, you know, Peter Elwell left us with a, with a half done um, response. And uh, and I think one of the first steps, I think there are two, that we owe ourselves as a select board is to have staff take the time to finish up our response to these recommendations. That's never done. It needs to be done. Part two is to have an airing of the alternatives to the community safety you know, process. And we've been promising through town managers and not town managers. And and now we have behind door number three, you know, John Potter, who's willing to take this on at level. And so, you know, we just need to keep our promises. We need to keep our promises in, in those two areas, an overall response, not cherry picking these few items, an overall response to how the town feels going forward with the recommendations. And we need an airing of what the town has to say to us in terms of what they've been working on all these years for alternatives. And, and, uh, you know, I know some, and maybe you know others. We we need a public airing of what they are, and I don't see hiring a person to be the answer to that. Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to kind of just acknowledge some of what my colleagues over here are saying. Right? Like usually when we're so, I want to be clear. I made a proposal about creating a department. I'm not, it's not a demand, it's a proposal, right? It's, you know, um, not even a motion yet. And when we've created new positions in the past, it's usually been a much slower process, right? That's true. And more. Oh, and well, and yes, agreed. So Elizabeth, I would say that the warning for this item is a discussion of the community safety fund and I'm proposing a use of the community safety fund. So I think it's okay. Um, and so, yeah, like we usually go slower and I'm not saying that we need to get this all taken care of right now. What I'm actually looking for. Um, and I'm really looking for from Ian and from Liz is like buy-in to at least exploring this idea a little further, you know, um, it is something that other towns are doing. I don't believe that it's right for us to ask the town manager's office to do this right now because we know intimately how busy they are with other things. Um, you know, we didn't have this conversation back in December 12 when Jessica asked for it, partly because John wasn't even here, you know? And like last year, we didn't get to that goal setting because I don't actually recall making a promise about a specific way we would solicit proposals. I do recall setting a goal to make an equitable, accessible, transparent process. And this ain't that, right? I agree with you there. 
you know. Um, but I want to put out an idea that I want to see if from the three, from the two of the board members that are going to be continuing, whether there's any interest in pursuing. Um, you know, if both of you are like, you know what, Daniel, I'm really uninterested in that. When the new board gets con constituted, I'll bring it back and we'll talk about it again when there's, you know, five of us here. Um, Bingo. <laughs> well, wait a second. Let me finish. You know, um, this work is important. And I believe that all of us consider it to be important. And I just want to kind of say one thing that was in the beginning of this report, because I didn't appreciate the cherry picking of just part of the recommendations. Um, the second one says, operationalize this commitment in budgets, time commitments, and work tasks as part of the town's ongoing regular practices to avoid a return to business as usual, which is hurting people. And so that's what I'm proposing we do by establishing some kind of, or at least by exploring establishing some kind of position or department within the town to help us move this work forward. Okay, wait a second. I think Jess had her hand up before. No? You did. Let... Okay. I see Daniel's position as an idea and that there's other ideas in the community that we have not heard. And so it, you're giving primacy right, right. to this idea rather than having an airing of all the ideas before, you know, efforts are extended. And so I would rather have a process where, as, as John Cutter has volunteered to do, have an airing of all that the community might seek to tell us mm -hmm. and and judge them all on the same plane and not giving primacy to one over the other okay daniel could you response? just kind of like flesh out what you think that looks like so that i can imagine what i'm saying yeah i'm curious about learning more about that well as john put forward you know um to hire people in in the community to help um you know judge what ideas are legal and complement existing services and whether they've been effective elsewhere and um you know and then to kind of organize the process by which they are presented in a public meeting mm -hmm. probably in a select board meeting and then go and and flesh them out and see recommend to us which ones are viable so maybe like hiring a consultant yes. to take a look at the report's recommendations and to solicit proposals from community organizations to bring about these recommendations More something less. like that yeah right and then we would develop a forum for consideration of those things we would be the body considering those things mm -hmm. you know so for me, that's not so different than what I'm proposing. It's just a, do we want to pick a contractor or do we want to embed it within the town operations? Yeah. And I and I believe that embedding it in the town operations is too big a step. Okay, so I'm going to stop us there. So I think uh, too big a step to make right at this moment, agreed. <laughs> I don't think we can build a department right now. Yeah. Okay, so we got to warn things. We got to make sure that things are right. We're having a discussion of this community safety fund. Um, but I think exploring it further is something that we should give clear guidance to the town manager on. Um, I wanted to speak on a couple of things. Um, I don't think you're as far apart from each other right. um, I as I, I really don't. Let me finish. Uh, so uh, one, I, I got to tell you, I work with the town manager's office a lot right now in the current role that I serve on the, this board. And I really don't feel like a lot of this work belongs in the town manager's office. Um, this is just my opinion. Um, uh, and I think that the reason that we just sort of assume that it is, is because uh, Peter did a really great job of taking it on because he felt really passionately about it. Um, and, you know, uh, God bless him. He was um, excellent at so many things. I don't necessarily think that that means that that, de that department is where this work belongs. Um, so that's one thing for consideration, really, uh, is... Liz, under the current sort of thought that you have, it still sits in the town manager's office primarily. 
Uh, let me finish. With the consultant. Yes, with a consultant, but still. Um, the other thing is uh, having read the same emails and everything that everybody else has gotten, it seems very clear to me that there are, are monies out there uh, available for this work. Um, and if I know anything about the town of Brattleboro, we are very good at seeking out and getting grants and monies from very various agencies and pools. Um, and uh, I don't really know how we best access those funds, um, but these things that we are looking at and considering, and some of them are very exciting, um, will require money. <laughs> and so uh, I want to be considering ways that we can use the 300, potentially 350, to leverage us to be looking and being in the conversation to be accessing those other funds. Um, I think that maybe it makes more sense that it's happening within an, uh, uh, an entity inside the town, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, so I think those are just other elements of this conversation to be considering. Um, and if any of these recommendations are going to be town functions like um, a rapid response team, right? Um, where is that going to live? Uh, and I think that that should be a question um, about a department or something like that. Again, down the road, but like, it's got to be part of this. So all of that, uh, Tim? Can I just say that I, you know, this is, a, this is frustrating to me because I've kind of wanted to be getting to the meat and potatoes of this document that was, that was given to us for a long time. Um, and you personally know that I've been advocating for streamlining this by saying which recommendations were just not going to happen. They kind of, Peter started this, yeah. we started this, and then we just kind of ignored few, a few that are so, in my opinion, dumb, that start to invalidate the validity of the entire document. So what I want, I think the next board and by the way, one of the new board members, I believe, uh, attended every single one of the community safety report meetings. So there's some knowledge going yeah. on, historical knowledge. So that would be helpful in getting quickly to a new document that is now the select boards, which actually has the power to move things forward. Uh, and at the same time, you should be able to get some more community buy-in. Yeah. Because as it exists now, it was a it was a stage, and it needs to move beyond that stage. I fully support that conversation. I just want to say that I also fully support the idea that a big idea that might fail, but if it's an innovative idea and it's worked elsewhere, like it's better to put more money into a good one idea or two ideas than to spread it out in some sort of process where we're soliciting any kind of ideas and then got 20 to 30 things. I really don't like that. I, I don't think that's an effective use of the spirit of the communities. <clears throat> but I'm going to shut up now because... Yeah, yeah I'm going to... Can I go to the community or do you... Do you, I saw your hand, but... Oh, yeah, well, I just I just want to support Tim's idea that, as I said previously, you know, uh, Peter Elwell got so far and some of the harder elements of the recommendations and, you know, who's whose bailiwick it's in. You know, is this a municipal function? Is this a legislative function? Is this a state function? You know, is this a is this a HRS function? Is this a hospital's job? You know, those designations and that reckoning has not taken place. And that reckoning needs to take place. And I think it's something that that our town manager and our town staff can wrestle with and report back to us to see how we want to wrestle with it. And I think that basically the discussion is agreed. And I just think that we don't have the expert. I don't think we have the expertise and we need some expertise to wrestle no, with all yeah, of Yeah, but uh, there's two parts. The first part in terms of preparing a response to the recommendations, completing that response. task. I think that's something that our town staff can do. Now, the second part, of understanding all of the recommendations that are out there in the public, that is something that we may or may not have expertise. I know that the fire department, police department, ACRS, and a lot of different entities have already discussed the mobile crisis response. 
So there's some expertise there. But I think that also that the town is perfectly capable of finding a consultant who can bring this process along. And so I just don't think that we're in the in in any way prepared to hire a a, a high level town staff member who has this expertise because I think that that's too far of a commitment for where we are right now. Okay, like that. Uh, so uh, if there's any other comments, I think uh, we're pretty clear on. We're not clear, but we've at least provided some uh, uh, opinions from board members. I'd love to hear from the community about where we're, okay, Jess? Just a real quick, um, it, it sounds like we need more information on what our options are. Yeah. As far as what a structure could look like with a consultant or a staff person or a department head, particularly cost. Um, I think you may find that the cost will be surprisingly high <laughs> for the expertise that we need. Um, and then also, um, I don't think that the work of um, sort of reporting, you know, adding the next column of this is gonna be so tough. There's been a lot of work that's been going on admirably both at the at the town staff level and in the police department and in the community around some of these. And it will be exciting to get that next column. I kind of agree with Ian about does the town manager's office have the time or the focus right now to be able to do that in a timely manner for moving the process forward? I'm not going to put John on the spot on that because I think if we ask him to, he will do an admirable mm -hmm. job at it. Um, so it's more of a question of us uh, than of him. So um, with that, um, I see your hand, uh, but I have had a hand in, up in Zoom a lot longer. So I'm going to go Zoom first, Frick, uh, but I appreciate your patience. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Um, Oh, uh, let me Eli Coughlin, Gallery. Let me pause you one second, Eli. Um, so yes, uh, community members, you've kind of heard where the board is at. Uh, there are a couple of differing opinions. We'd love to hear your own thoughts on this, but also if you have feelings about these things, um, uh, that would be a great way. I, I'm just cognizant of the time, so I, I would like to uh, have some comments from the community, we'll hear back from the board, and then I'd like to provide some guidance to the town manager. Eli, apologize for interrupting. Go ahead. Eli Coughlin, Galbraith, District 2. I'm uh, in town meeting and on the finance committee. I want to say that the select board voted 5-0 to start implementing these recommendations two years ago this month. Four out of the five of you were there, and you made a commitment to all of them. We've, a lot of us who have been watching this very closely, have seen the struggles you have been through trying to get this back on the agenda after two years. And I'm really glad that you're doing it now. And I just want to reaffirm that all of the recommendations, the, the vote was to accept and to start implementing all of them. Yeah, Liz mentioned a meeting where the community comes together to present proposals. Is this that meeting? And if not, when is it going to be? One of the things that would demonstrate a commitment is to set that meeting, to say, this is when you come in and say your ideas. That said, I've seen the idea of a new town department for community safety bandied about for at least three weeks now uh, in various circles, and I'm really excited about it, and I think it's a really great idea. This would make this would create continuity in a town that has, you know, short select board term limits and or short select board terms specifically and other ways that make it kind of difficult to create a 10 and 20 and 30 year plan. If you have if you have a town department and town staff on this for a long time, that's a reassurance that these really some of these very long term <laughs> recommendations can get a chance to run. And I had one more idea in regards to the, in regards to that, because someone said, where is it going to live? Put it in the first floor of the transportation center. That's where we talk about 
needing community well, safety can. resources is right there. Put the department there. That's what I think. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, Rick, hand up next. Rick's Pride District 3. Um, as uh, in my professional life and also as a, a neighborhood watch organizer and as someone who has worked to uh, harden some of the more vulnerable targets for uh, break-ins, um, I would like to suggest that rather than throwing money at it, I'm, I'm not, I, I would like to see a, uh, have a close look at whether um, hiring somebody makes sense or makes people feel like the job is already covered and they don't need to step up. I feel like this is the kind of thing where neighborhood watch kind of things and neighbor, you know, empowerment of the people who live in the neighborhoods is where the rubber meets the road. Um, we had fantastic success in the Frost Elliott Street area with a neighborhood watch and were able to shut down drug houses and keep them shut down for years at a time. Um, and I think perhaps uh, maybe some funding for training people to do neighborhood watches, you know, maybe one time things like that or periodic trainings. Um, I, I'm also, now that I'm aware of that list, I, I missed it. Um, I'm going to look it over and uh, give you my opinions of which ones I think are dumb and which ones have legs. But that's that's my um, first reaction to this whole idea. It's, it's been a source of great concern to me for a while now. Um, yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Frick. And uh, yeah, I would just comment that one of the um, kind of exciting um, part to me, uh, exciting parts of the community safety recommendations and discussion in the report itself are um, like neighborhood, uh, and I'm not going to use the terminology correctly, but was it restorative justice. Restorative justice, but like on a neighborhood, like neighbor to neighbor level. Um, and I have actually spoken to a couple of people who are part of the Frost Elliott Street. Um, I think it's kind of fallen to the wayside now, but yeah. at one point you can actually still see it. If you're on Elliott Street, one of the um, light poles has a, um, uh, a, a thing painted on it. Um, and I'm just going to push you back down and go <laughs> back to the next that's person. The going on. That's because oh, I was, okay. yes, we talked about that later. Okay. So uh, I can't see that name. It's uh, Aslan Thompson. Great. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Um, and thank you for talking about this tonight. I'm really excited to be at a select board meeting again. It's been a while. Um, I'm just kind of bolstering something that um, Eli said too, because it's interesting to me tonight that the conversation seems to be going toward taking time to consider these recommendations or whether the recommendations are good or not. And it feels like, you know, we did spend two years or at least yeah a year on that, talking about that and doing all of this. And I just want to remind um, what Eli mentioned, the what was approved in March of 2021 was, quote, moving forward on implementation of the recommendations set forth the community safety review team's report in the manner described in this Peter Elwell's memorandum and the attached implementation table. And it was a 5-0 vote. So the, the debate about whether or not we should even do this happened, right? And then Tim Wessel, Elizabeth McLaughlin, you know, um, Daniel Quip, Ian Goodnow, like all of you were on that five. And so we voted to move forward. And Peter was doing really great work on that. And so this happened and it was exciting. And, uh, and honestly, now my personal comment is that back then, I don't know that I would have said like, I, my personal opinion is you should hire someone. But um, I'm hearing over this time, you know, that the board consistently saying, we don't have the expertise to do this. We don't know if we can give out money. We don't know how to consider these things. And so I, especially what Ian just said tonight, I think makes a lot of sense. Like if you do want to support what you voted unanimously to do back then, a good way to do that would be to have somebody who could actually do that work. Someone that everyone trusts, you know, um, and take the burden off the town office, take the burden off the select board, have less long meetings where we all argue, you know? So um, I think, yeah, it feels like everybody's in a similar place about it. And I'm really hopeful. So I'm appreciating this a lot. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on to room. Yeah. Hey there, can you all hear me? Yes. All right, awesome. Uh, Emily Magus-Russell, thank you so much for having this conversation tonight. Um, 
the main things I want to sort of presence in our conversation here, the little bit of time I have, I echo the the, the sentiments about um, how we've had a couple of years here to find the time to um, presence these conversations to seek and solicit community opinions. And we've done a lot of that. Y'all have done a lot of that through. I'm wondering, Tim, if you'd be willing to give me your attention. Sorry, I was Thank you so much. Um, we've done a lot of that through the solicitation in select board meetings. We've also done a lot of that through um, the review process. There's a, a few different places that that has occurred over the past couple of years. And I think we can actually all agree that it takes a lot of labor. And I wonder if that's actually one of the areas of conflict that we have is the like amount of time and energy and labor that it takes to really explore these really complex problems that we have in our community and that many communities are facing and that we need more time, more energy, more labor to be able to actually learn because we don't actually know exactly what to do or exactly what's going to work. And um when I was talking about my husband to my husband, John, about this, he used to work at the co-op and he said, oh, this would have been such a great thing to have at the co-op, this position, because we'd call the police because we didn't know what to do about certain problems that we have. And, you know, we're all waking up to some of the concerns and problems with with, um, you know, the burden of the police department and what they have to deal with. And, you know, maybe there's actually other ways that we can solve some of these needs in our community. Right. So. Community members are already calling town-funded programs, staff people, and departments to get help solving their problems. We are just talking about the possibility, and I so appreciate y'all who are, are having this conversation, all of us really, for the possibility that somebody could be really focusing their time and labor on researching and looking through and having power. I spent I've spent hours of the last few weeks and I've spent hours today. I spent an hour on the phone with somebody who has inhabited this position in a neighboring town to learn more about what their experience was and what it's like to possibly have somebody who could be working in our town and paid to do the labor that y'all are doing unpaid, that I'm doing unpaid to understand and, and, and have a deeper sense of what might be possible. The very things that you're saying, Liz, like which of these recommendations really would work in our town and which wouldn't? You know, Tim, which one is, and you know, your words are dumb, but my words are like, which, which ones might actually not work at all? Don't make sense for our town um, from, from that perspective, right? But we don't actually have the time and labor and resources to do that. And in order to do that, we're going to need time and labor and resources. So I just want to remind us of that. And also the, the capacity to thread and weave together some of the community resources that we do have that, that, um, that we can connect with each other to, to bind this work together. So thank you so much for your consideration. Great. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, no hands on Zoom. Uh, anybody else in the room? Yep. Come on up. Can you hear me if I keep a mask on? I think I can. Uh, can other folks hear? Okay. BCTV, we good? You, yeah. If I go closer, is that better? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, part of it is for me, and part of it is so that other folks that are masking are able to show up to select board meetings. Um, thank you for bringing forth such a bold proposal on this work. This is a very exciting meeting, and I want to take ownership for being one of the people that emailed I think all of you up on the, is it a dais, a dais? Not quite. The so stage. Am I just saying your name? And oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Alex Fisher, District 2. I haven't been in person for a long time. It's always been on Zoom. Yeah, welcome. Um, so I emailed earlier just sharing. Yep. Thank you, Tim. That's my email. Um, thoughts on both not using a disbursement method for this amount of funds, as someone that has done grassroots organizing and specifically has co-founded and led one of the organizations in this town doing immense amounts of community safety work. Also, I'm a professional finance consultant. Receiving one-time small amounts of money are not going to move initiatives forward. So that to me is like, if we're really talking about the folks receiving attention, we want their proposals heard 300, maybe $350,000 one time split up is not a meaningful um, amount of funding or a like 
sustainable amount of way, sustainable way to move things forward. The idea of building capacity and building infrastructure is one of the only ways management wise, we're going to get ourselves out of a circular flow of just bringing things continuously back to this body and continuously back to this meeting. So I'm excited about this idea. I think it's great. I've personally been very much behind it for months and can be blamed with why some people knew before other people because I was having conversations about what might be feasible. So please direct any feelings of left out towards me because I was the one communicating that, not anyone up there. So if that is what's happening, I'm happy to talk to you after this meeting and also just generally really excited about building infrastructure in this town. We need it. And this is a moment that we actually have funds to start it. And I think it's a great moment. So thank you, Daniel, for bringing it forward. And thanks for those that are supporting it. And I hope Liz and Tim, you're going to support something big and bold and impactful moving forward. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Alex. Uh, no, one hand on Zoom. Dick. Dick, welcome back. Uh, <clears throat> get my camera rolling here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, interesting conversation. Uh, listening to Tim's words earlier on and saying that the board accepted uh, the study uh, but didn't mention that they were acceptance of all the recommendations in the study. I've certainly talked to a few, uh, not a lot of people, but a few people that were involved uh, and uh, felt like their input wasn't taken uh, seriously and left the committee. Uh, and my understanding is that uh, the two writers of the final report didn't share it with the rest of the committee. And I don't, I don't know if that's true. Uh, maybe somebody on the board could answer that question for me, but that's what I heard. Uh, so I certainly would like to get that straightened out. We're to, uh, the last speaker talked about the amount of money here. We're talking potentially $350,000. I mean, that's nothing. That's really nothing. The, the skating project is a bigger project uh, uh, than we're talking about here. And, you know, I agree with Liz. We haven't heard, uh, I haven't heard uh, any proposals from the public yet that maybe the board would say, this is a good idea. I certainly am not in, uh, in favor of hiring another staff person. I mean, we have a new town manager, yes. Uh, uh, he has promised, he has showed that, he has promised. We have an assistant town manager. Uh, and so I, since I've been a board member uh, before, I, they're busy, but they're not overly overwhelmed. They, they are just busy. And I don't think that saying, okay, we'd like you to, to look at this. We've been two years now. Uh, and I've, and I, I've been the one who's been vocal and said, Hey, what's going on here? This should have been brought forward. But how many ideas have actually been put forward here tonight? Only That's zero. Crazy. The one that Daniel has is hiring a full-time staff position. And so I'm not in favor of that because why take that good money unless you're going to commit maybe some ARPA money to, to hiring a person. But I would certainly, if you're going to take a minimal amount of money and bring in a, a console to help the board sort out proposals that you might get or that are right in front of you, then I could go along with that. But when this is such a- Wrap up your thought, Dick. This is such a minimal amount of money and to think that we need a new staff person, I think that the vocal minority tonight is driving that conversation. And once this gets out into the public sector, there might be a little bit more pushback. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dick. Okay. Uh, are there hands in the public? Yes. Hi. I too am going to wear a mask if that's working for folks. Let me know if I need to increase my volume. 
My name is Anne Louise Wagner, and I'm from District 2. Um, I uh, There were some other pieces that kind of bubbled up for me in hearing the last speaker. Um, I think there's therefore two things that I want to highlight. One um, is that I get to spend a lot of time in schools talking about problem solving and supporting groups and thinking about how to solve problems. And the first step within that is to assess what are the obstacles in the way. And what I hear from so many folks from various different perspectives is that time and expertise are two pieces that continue to get in the way. And so as we think about the different ideas that are coming forward around how to deal with that, it's looking at how do we invest the resources in order to have somebody or somebodies with the expertise and the um, time really to be able to bring that to fruition and not look to these meetings and the, this group of folks doing that work. So I, I kind of echo and support that uh, flow of problem solving of looking at those two obstacles can be solved in that way. The second thing that I want to highlight, uh, there's this like concept of like um, hearing community input for getting ideas on what to do. And my sense is that that's what the community safety review report was, was getting folks input and really prioritizing and taking a really mindful, thoughtful approach to do that for folks that are the most impacted. And so these, this is the, like the results of that, that have been sitting here and that I, I just want to name that piece that, that's what we need to then do something with. And the time and the expertise and the energy to do that isn't in this room and that's okay. We just need to invest the, the money in order to get folks in order to be able to do that. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, Jess. Can I just give you a list real quick? A list of what? This is a list of things that the Community Safety Review recommended putting funding towards. It's it's pretty simple. Okay. Okay. Housing, food shelves, free meals, community gardens, land trusts for food production, spaces for belonging and connection in neighborhoods, freak out space, mutual aid networks and skill sharing, BIPOC run programs, voluntary support programs for individuals and families, restorative justice practices, and community trainings on de-escalation and direct support. Those are some of the things that were explicitly mentioned. And it's really clear. And you're right. We have this list. Okay. Uh, May I? Okay. So, and I think what's missing, yes, I hear you. That's a list of things, right? And what I'm hearing from Liz and what I've said as well is that there is not the expertise in this room, with all due respect, um, to bring forward those things. Um, maybe some of them we might know a little bit more about than others. Like I work for a social services agency. It's true. <laughs> he makes fun of me every time and I'm sorry to bring it up, but it is what I do at work every day. And like, you know, we don't have additional capacity. We barely have the capacity to, to meet the demand that comes through our door as it is. You know, so what we're talking about here is trying to build capacity. And from what I've heard, we could, try and do it a couple of ways, right? We could try and um, seek a contractor to learn more about ways to bring forward um, those kinds of things in our community. I presume they would create a process. We're pretty bad at creating processes. I got to be honest. You know, um, it's hard to do in these kinds of settings. Like, it's really the kind of thing that you need to go away and, and work on something. And we don't do that because all of our work happens right here. Um, so we could either ask a contractor, right? First of all, we need to find a contractor, right? Do an RFP for that. Ask them to then solicit stuff that lines up with what's needed in the community safety review. We could do that, right? That's fine. We could spend some of our 300 or potentially 350,000 on that. Um, we could use ARPA money instead. We could use general fund dollars if town meeting feels like it. Um, I don't know. You know, and then the other idea that I proposed was that instead of hiring a contractor, we establish a position in town because that has a more long term, um, you know, 
role, right? A contract is a limited engagement. They don't work for, they work for us as a contractor, but you know, we don't have that relationship. They're not going to chat with Lenny all that much. They're not going to chat with John or Patrick, you know, um, they're not going to form relationships with people in quite that same deep way. They're going to do it. They probably would do it in a deep way, but over a short period of time. Right. And so those are the competing ideas. Are there the only two ideas out there about how to bring this stuff forward? Probably not. It's clear that like there's some disagreement here. I just want us to move forward in a way that will be impactful and sustainable in a long lasting way. Right. I want to finish my term on this board in two years time saying, boy, that was hard work, but look, look how much we were able to accomplish. And you've got three more years ahead of you. And I know that you want to accomplish the same thing, right? And you've just got one more year. So what do you want to accomplish? And John, hopefully you are here for the next 45 years or something. Um, (laughs) You know, and so I don't think there's like a whole lot of like anguish or, you know, whatnot here. But we do need to decide to move forward with this in some kind of meaningful way. And so I would like to say, John, how about we commit to coming back to this conversation, say, in one month's time or even six weeks' time um, and exploring the ideas a little bit further? And maybe between now and then, your office, when it has time, um, can learn from other communities about how they've brought this work forward and bring that information back to us so we can be more informed and make better decisions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Including, well, let's, let's... including Liz's proposal, including my proposal. And and an element of that could be that, uh, for example, uh, the Northampton uh, uh, Department, maybe that started with a with a independent um, review by a I contractor no or something. Who knows? Yeah. I don't really Let's know. Find out. I know Tim is process. What? So you're talking about something that isn't part of our Warren discussion here. So I don't Absolutely. even know what it is. I don't I even know. If you no, the memo, no. But... The like an email flying around with good ideas is not how but we, we got do this afternoon. Here. Okay. In deference, in in imparting a little mercy onto town staff, the first thing that has to happen is that you need to convert this document into the select board's own document, into the elected town leadership's document. And it can be wide and broad and and accept all ideas, but you can't say that this is the document moving forward. It's not. It's definitely not. Then you need to let this go. Make it our own as a town. Absolutely. Then I'm really confused. Well, I think that I don't even know what you're talking about moving forward with at this point, because we have no backup materials to like. We're not we're not. Com- OK, um, well, it's finish your like, thought. it sounds like you're proposing that there's a new. You know, there's a town department no. that's going to do something. But you just gave, you know, proposed instructions to our town manager to do right. what did so what I just said was to ask John or the town manager's office when they have capacity to explore how other communities have brought forward this kind of work. I don't even know what that uh, means. No, no, no. Okay. So huh. I, I, I'd, re- like, I'd really like to... I just, stop I just want to understand what it means. Um, so I think, it's, I, I, I think one of the things that's important is that we really warned this to talk about the fund. Sure. And so you are, I don't think it's, it's not off topic to be talking about all of the recommendations because that's an element of this discussion, but we are talking about util, how are we going to utilize the fund? And what the discussion has been about is spending some of the fund to get expertise to help us with these implementations. That's literally like, right. that is the discussion. And so I think the, where the board is basically in agreement and the community is basically in agreement that we need some expertise on how to do that. And we should probably spend some of the money. Should it be a contractor? Should it be uh, something more permanent? You know, I think there are positives and negatives to both. And really what would help is uh, some more information. And we can give town staff some direction on giving us more information. And it accomplishes what Dick's point of, um, I love agreeing with Dick on things, um, that uh, we give the community another warned uh, meeting to discuss this. 
And they can come to us and say, why are you spending money on experts? Just give this out to the community for X, Y, and Z projects. And the board can hear that, drop the idea of any kind of consultant and move forward with that. But this is a discussion about spending some of the money here, how we want to think about spending some of this money. And I agree that it has to do with recommendations, but I think understanding what this item was really about is important to understanding what this conversation has been. Okay. Liz. Well, I think that, uh, again, I want to take uh, John Potter at his word and I suggest that we have two tasks before us. One is to finalize the recommendations into our own town uh, document that we can move forward with. And there is um, money from the fund that can be spent to assist town staff in that expertise. Then further, there is money from the fund that can be spent to uh, provide a consultant to help us and the town staff hear what the people have to say. And, and I believe that these other suggestions to look into what they're doing in Northampton is one of the ideas that need to be put forward as, among all the others and that this idea does not get primacy uh, because we got five emails this afternoon. And so we need to do what we said we were going to do, which is finalize the recommendations and hear from the community about their proposals. And we can use consultants to do that. And I don't think it's an enormous expense. Uh, we got hands up over here, hands up on Zoom. Uh, I don't know who's up first. Between the two. A, I have a direct just, question. I don't want to quibble about it. I'm just going to do a clerk thing. The minutes of the meeting where this was accepted. The motion was to authorize down staff to, town staff to move forward on implementation of the recommendations set forth in the community safety review team's report dated December 31st, 2020, in the manner described in the memorandum dated February 25th, 2021. That's the, that's the town document. That's There's a memo, not just the chart. Um, from town manager Elwell and in the implementation table that was attached to that memorandum. So, I mean, that was before my time, so I had to look it up. But that to me is very specific and very clear that the board adopted what Peter Elwell translated the community safety review into as our implementation plan and path forward and our commitment to this work. And, and to so all of it? And it was not complete. No, it well, it, that's actually not, it's not complete. It was more that basically there were some things that were like labeled done. There were some things that were labeled, we can do this, sure. Just, I need some policy direction. There were some that were like, I don't know, we can do this. And then there were some that were um, like with, we need more information, right? And there were some that said, as, as Tim used to Tim's vocabulary, this is a dumb idea. This is unlawful. This is not for the municipality to undertake. Yeah. That's all and, I'm saying. And so yeah. those things need to be established as our own document and how we intend to implement. Because Peter had this whole memo, went with the chart that said, you know, we're we're recognizing certain things and we're not recognizing other things. And that seems to have been getting lost in the sauce of all the hands up. But we need to finish that work and be and and have that as an accomplishment okay as something that has been half done for two years all right i i really we need to move on from this discussion so i'm going to hear from fish and i'm going to hear from franz yes or actually i'm sorry no fish first with a hand up and then front. i don't think it does no 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 not, not, not a small board. Board. we don't we don't, we don't. run by them. okay fine let's hear it I... okay <laughs> i just fish had his hand up longer that was all i'm going for <laughs> all right so if I thought I understood what this whole thing was about walking in here, I am completely lost. Now. Okay. All right. 
I have to feel that this this review took place, was voted on by five members, 5-0 and passed, correct? Now we've had $300,000 sitting in an account, which has got to be completely irritating to anybody who's sitting on the back wall here, anybody who is out there in Zoom land, that nothing has been happening with this money. I am not a fan of putting $300,000, even though Dick DeGray calls it a small amount. It's not a small amount in my book. It means something. It's something that can do some good. So choices are either do something with it, take Daniel at his suggestion, find somebody who can do something that will advance the conversation forward. Or if all of these things have been approved by the board, figure out which ones are actually actionable. I don't think that that's a hard thing to do and figure out which ones we we can do right away so that there is some forward momentum in this. Or here's a wild idea. Just refund the police department with that money until we can sit back and figure out because we know we have immediate needs for police officers right now. And I am not saying to take money away from any of the good work that you guys have done. I am just saying if we are not going to use that money for this, that is where we need to be. And I'm, I am honestly, so I have been listening to this conversation unfold. I'm, I'm hearing everybody is irritated up there. I'm hearing everybody is irritated back here, although I have to say that they're more well behaved. Uh, and um, you're welcome. So th those are just my thoughts. Okay. And I think it's really simple to set a date outside of this meeting to discuss these issues. I think I don't remember what call, what what Zoom person had suggested that, but I think that that is a really quickly actionable idea. And I'll just leave it there. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, Franz, point of order. And I'll do a look at that after the meeting about whether it takes precedent. I'm or sure not. we'll have many opportunities to discuss that. Oh, goody. Um, so the, the point of order is that there's a problem that there's no motion that's been made. Oh, a motion oh, had been that's... made. We could be discussing the specifics of the motion and some things would be germane and some things were not. And as it's going now, this could go all night. There's no limit well, on the discussion. Work. Everybody has yeah. a response to what everybody else just responded. So my advice would be to adhere to the rules of order, have somebody make a motion that can be voted up and down, up or down. And after that, somebody else can make a different motion. But that would at least yeah. focus us on the task at hand. You know, thank you. Thank you very much for that, Franz. And I've actually had a pretty long conversation with uh, Bob Fisher about this because we don't do it that way on the board. And it's been that way the entire time I've been on the select board. I don't really know why we do a motion at the end of the conversation when we have one. It is actually supposed to be a move for, for a motion at the beginning and the discussion on a motion. I, you know what? You're going to be on the board in a week. We can talk about uh, doing it differently moving forward. Hey, I, why didn't you read this while you're waiting? We've, so wait, just, just, I, I really, I actually really need everyone to stop talking when it's not their turn to talk. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so I hear you and uh, thank you for that comment. And let's like, think about that for next year's board. Um, I think that we are basically at a place where we can uh, give some direction. I can hear from maybe one or two uh, uh, community members and then I really need to move on to the next agenda item. I don't know whose hand has been up on these. John Ungerleiter. Okay. Hey. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, thanks. I just wanted to uh, remind folks at the, at the end of that the that meeting in, in deep COVID in 2020 that that I had proposed a follow-on to the community safety study to to talk to, let's call them service providers from different agencies around town to get them to talk to each other and come up with creative ideas for alternatives to community safety. And it was approved. And the, and and at that time, I said to Shay and to have she and Emily wanted to have somebody else do it. I didn't have to do it. And that was the last I heard of it. So I'm not sure what's been done. I don't know if there have been those discussions. We have a lot of expertise and experience around this community from the, the Community Justice Center to the DCF to the uh, even, even including the police. And are those people sitting in the rooms and figuring out what they need from each other to respond? Uh, even today was working with guys in my domestic violence group, getting them to think, how could we respond instead of waiting until they've been violent and, and violated? How could we have 
have some kind of mechanisms to reach to reach them. So so they're uh, they don't offend. So that's all that's out there. I don't know if it's happened. I don't know if it will happen, but I just wanted to remind uh, folks that that, that that's a, a, a can be a very fruitful path and not an expensive one. I think that was a budget item of three thousand dollars to do that at the time. OK, thank you, John. Uh, Daniel, I'm not super clear on the proposal there. Uh, John, do you want? Oh, might have been referring to a proposal within the group. It's already written up. I mean, it was it was at the last meeting. It's actually item two, and uh, we come back to it with the next next term if you want any time. Uh, there was a meeting? proposal that was approved, um, but Emily and Che chose not to go forward with it at the end of the so a proposal in the community safety review process that was like considered by that committee not by this group of people no it was approved by us emily oh wait i i, I just want to learn more okay uh i don't know if we need to get into all of this right but, now I, you know I, yeah, going I forward it's, it's the same type of mm -hmm. community airing of what might be a, a fruitful alternative. Right. So uh, I saw one more hand in the room uh, and then I'd like to provide, try to <laughs> resurrect some kind of guidance here uh, so that we can move forward. Ooh. Hi, Alex Fisher, District 2. Again, thank you for letting me speak twice from the community. Um, I'm going to take a deep breath. If anyone else wants to join me, this has been... A little while, so I'm just going to take a moment. And I will try to follow in the words of behaving well, <laughs> as mentioned by Peter. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that so much work has been done by the folks that y'all chose to do that work. Mm -hmm. And the RFP process to get consultants last time was so much time and effort. So what I'm really excited about are the ways that this town has moved forward in its infrastructure when it created the HR department. So I got to be part of community input on the hiring process that resulted in Sally Nix and now is a growing department. There's others that were a part of hiring John Potter. There's others that were a part of hiring Norma Hardy. And there's ways to bring community input in. But I just want to really, really sit with not the nitty gritty, like wordsmithing of things that is happening here and the bickering of this memo versus that memo and these words versus this minute. It's like, are we committed to creating community based responses to harm? in our community. Are you up there committed to that work? Do you want to see that happen? I'm actually looking for like a yes or no, because that's a real question. Are you committed to creating safety in our town? Okay, so some are saying yes, and some are actually not responding to that, which is a little disheartening. Resources are needed. Change is hard. Infrastructure change is hard, organizational change is hard, and paradigm shift of like our minds and our hearts is really hard work. I've seen a lot of opinions change from the folks up here over the last few years. Parts of that have been through conversations that I've been honored to have. I, you know, walked and talked with Peter Elwell frequently around this work. I was not a fan of the creation of this fund because this fund is a distraction. This fund is not in the recommendations. This fund is a small amount of money for the amount of work that needs to happen. And so I also just want to really recenter the work needs to get done. It can't, doesn't have to be funded by a, like a very small amount of money when we're talking about town government, $300,000 one time. That doesn't have to be what funds it, but I hope that the town really commits to building capacity and infrastructure to build safety. Whether or not it's this $300,000 or some other $150,000 for a one-year position or a contractor, I just hope y'all commit to the actual work and not fight over whose idea it was 
over what memo you're referencing, over which specific line item and which specific recommendation, but Ask actually move it forward. So I'm just, I'm excited about ideas that move it forward and hope that we're really committing to the base piece of work here. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Um, okay, so Liz. I have a proposed motion if you think that would be. I think it would, let's hear it. Okay, I propose that we Solicit, organize, and provide a review of the proposed community safety fund initiatives. I propose, as the town manager has suggested, that specialized advice may be necessary. And I further propose that this staff and consulting work should include an analysis of the broader review of the community safety report's recommendation in a manner that completes the review begun by Peter Elwell. And I further believe that the community safety fund should be used to pay for these consultants in this review process. Okay. Um, would you uh, entertain amending it to include uh, uh, information about Daniel and Jess's suggestion as to uh, that consultant being more of a department? Um, as an alternative? Yes. So we have the two alternatives to the electives. Yeah. Uh, information. I'm going to need to hear that again. That yeah, it's long. Yeah. Okay. And I don't, I'm not, do we need a motion? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we definitely do. Let me, I'm just writing no, down please. the alternative. Yeah, yeah. And friendly, like amend the, mm -hmm. yeah. I might need to discuss it a little bit. But it's not mm -hmm. that okay. Okay. We rarely okay. have dead air on the select board meeting because we all like talking so much. We don't have dead air. You just felt it. I just felt it. Let it I can't help it. See what he means? Yeah. Uh, it is not. <laughs> You built by the hour. Come on. <laughs> okay. Yep. I move to solicit, organize, and provide review of proposed community safety fund initiatives. The town manager has suggested specialized advice would be necessary. This staff work and consulting work should include an analysis of the broader review of the community safety reports recommendations in a manner that completes the review begun by Peter Elwell in December, 2021. I believe that the community safety fund should be used to pay for these consultants and this review process. Alternatively, the town manager and staff should evaluate the merits of a town staff person to establish community safety actions within Brattleboro. Uh, so I'd look to this side to see whether they're amiable to the second element. It mostly makes sense to me. I, I just want to kind of hear more about how we would find the, so we're trying to like solicit the advice of somebody who's a professional or has expertise in this matter. What are your thoughts on how we would go ahead about that. Well, that's going to be information that John brings back to us. How would you go about that, John? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would, I would think about how uh, different approaches to secure expertise. Probably a, a RFP or something. Okay, like that. so an RFP. Would the RFP just be drafted by the town manager? This sort of is very. This mirrors the process of how we even got to the community safety review, and that's okay. Um, I just want to know, like, are you going to work on that RFP and then we'll never see it and then we'll see the responses to it or will that have select board involvement? Um, it, it's up to the motion. The, the I, way the, the way I hear this motion is it would not, we would not get to that phase yet, mm -hmm. that it would come back to us with both of these okay. uh, items works. for consideration, right? Um, I, you know, I took us a lot lot longer to get there than I really think it needed to, Board. Uh, That's okay. It, you know, the, the trouble with this conversation is, it's not this conversation, just give me a second, okay? Not everything needs to take five seconds. Sometimes it needs a minute. Um, 
you know, there were 41 recommendations in this report. We accepted them all. And we knew that each of us had our thoughts about some of those 41 recommendations. So we did a sort of not a contradictory thing, but we knew that there was work to be done to unravel how to bring this stuff forward. And we knew we would disagree about it. And then we didn't have many conversations about it for over a year. And so all of this stuff has been bubbling away. I know many of these people in the audience. Liz knows some of the people who are on Zoom. We all have relationships with people that want to see this work come forward. I have a relationship with these people too. And we're trying to hold all that stuff together and not kill each other and achieve something that is actually for the good of all of us, right? That's what we're trying to do. So let's not get too upset about it all. And let's take Liz's motion. I think it's reasonable. And I think we can move it forward. And we'll just keep moving forward. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Tim? I just, the I believe was weird. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll take that out. Take out the I believe. Take out the I believe. Personal I statement. In- okay, personal I statement in motion. Not good. Take that out. Uh, so my last comment before Jess is just to John. Does the motion as amended make sufficient sense to provide you and town staff with enough guidance? I think so. Uh, I would love to hear one more time. I'm sorry. I'll take out the I believe. Give me a minute. Uh, uh, do you want to speak on this before? Uh, listening to it again would yep. be helpful. It might answer my question. Okay. Okay. Especially without those I believe. Oh. Franz and Peter, if you guys are. Okay. Ready. One more time. I move to solicit to solicit, organize, and provide review of the proposed community safety fund initiatives. That's part one. Town manager has suggested specialized advice may be necessary. Um, Staff and consulting work should include an analysis of the broader review of the community safety report's recommendations in a manner that completes the review begun by Peter Elwell in December 2021. The community safety fund should be used to pay for these consultants in this review process. Alternatively, town manager and staff should evaluate the merits of a town staff person to establish community safety actions and alternatives. Okay. Uh, Slightly friendly or friendly amendment first. Change alternatively to additionally. Additionally. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so that's not one or the other. We're asking, we're asking the town staff to do more work, yeah. <laughs> do both. Uh, yes. And so the role, Liz, in your motion, the role of the consultant or staff person would be to provide expertise on reviewing the community safety fund initiatives that are brought to the board and to analyze and review and complete the community safety review recommendations. Yes. And I would imagine that John Potter may have one or more people to do this. And so that role, and and in this proposal, that role will either be filled by a consultant or a staff person. And at a future meeting, the board will see what each of those possibilities might look like and will make decision on how to move forward. Okay. All those in favor? Cool. Aye. 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 Carries 5-0. Thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, community members for speaking on this. I appreciate everyone's patience as we move through it. I agree with you, Daniel. It takes time. And I apologize if I was short with you. Um, I know we got to decide who's being chair next week. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, okay. So we're going to move on to... Uh, no, I'm going to keep moving. Um, so we're going to move into new business agenda item 8D, uh, which is town match for Winston Prouty campus development grant. Uh, I think that's going to be John. Yes. So um, actually, I'm going to turn it over to Assistant Town Manager Moreland yep. to, uh, to present this item. So, I don't think so good evening. Uh, I'm just going to ask that uh, we keep the volume down in the crowd so that we can keep on this item. Go ahead. Patrick, I apologize. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, so uh, in your in your packet was a memo related to this particular request. So I'll uh, walk the board through it just rather quickly. And then uh, I would also like to note that uh, 
uh, Winston County Executive Director Chloe Leary is in the meeting, and we'll get her up here in just a moment. Oh, nice. um, as you may recall, the town has recently completed a housing action plan, which calls for um, the immediate need for 500 additional housing units in Brattleboro. Uh, the Winston Prouty Center is the owner of a 180 acre property in the center of town that has uh, mm -hmm. developable, developable and available property. Uh, and is very interested in exploring the potential uh, for utilizing that property for new housing development. Um, the town is already working in coordination with Winston Prouty to assess the water and sewer and utility needs of that property in order to be able to support such a housing development. Um, and in your packet was a, a, a letter along with a little information sheet from uh, Chloe Leary asking for fifty thousand uh, dollars to support the development of housing um, on the property uh, the fifty thousand dollars from the town would match uh, a fifty thousand dollar grant from the thomas thompson trust and together those funds would be utilized to hire a, an architecture firm which would enable them to to further develop the conceptual design behind the project that they're contemplating there um the uh Funds are proposed to come from the uh, revolving loan fund. The revolving loan fund presently has a balance of about 190,000. Um, it's getting a little low, but obviously we could support this uh, particular uh, request at this time. Um, I think staff has some ideas for ways in which we might replenish this fund in the not too distant future. But that's a different uh, discussion altogether. Um, and mm -hmm. If it's all right with the board, I would ask Chloe Leary if she had anything she wanted to say. I have a clarifying question. Sure. When you say revolving loan fund, you need also it's called program income. So uh, hmm. the funds that go into the revolving loan fund begin their life as program income. <laughs> and after a period of time and through a series of actions of being loaned out and returned to the town, they become unrestricted revenue. Together, those two types of dollars constitute the revolving loan fund, but they arrive to the town first as program income. Now a bill becomes a law? It's kind of like that, <laughs> okay, right? Thank you. So, so, so like, let's say we do a community development project and we secure a loan from the state. We loan it out to a business. They return the money to us. That's program income. When we loan it out to somebody and it comes back to us, it becomes unrestricted revenue. Together, mm. All of the funds in the revolving loan fund are either program revenue, program income, or unrestricted revenue. At the present time, all of our funds in the RLF are actually unrestricted revenue um, because they've already been loaned out and brought back in before. Thank you. Sure. Uh, do we want to uh, hear from Chloe? Is, is, yeah. uh, I'm actually looking to Tim. Tim, this is your item okay. uh, that you um, requested. Um, I went ahead and told you I, first. I don't need to take ownership or anything, but. Uh, <laughs> I did invite Chloe, and she's here. So, um, well, that is a high death count. To uh, suggest this to our board, cool. and I think it would be a, a great thing for the town to support to show that we have a little skin in the game to helping us move towards some housing solutions because we need units. Absolutely. Thank you, Chloe. Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you all. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Great. Um, Thank you all so much for considering this uh, request and for uh, considering how to support our project. It's really, I've been thinking the past couple of days about what uh, an honor it is actually to have an asset that we can contribute to such a huge problem in our region. And so, um, you know, I know that the Winston Prouty Center is maybe an um, unlikely suspect in the housing development world. And we certainly have lots of partners and people helping us. And I think the, the value of us um, sort of shepherding or stewarding the project is that um, we really do need the community to help us. We really need everybody on board to make this happen. It isn't our project. We're, um, we're taking the helm because we can. And so um, I think these kinds of um, shows, uh, demonstrations of support are really important and they communicate a lot, I think, also to the external world. As we, this is a really big project. It has a lot of potential. Um, and it's going to take a lot of steps to get there. So this is one small step, and this is the foundational step uh, towards seeing if we can make this a reality. I 
um, and very confident that we will have success here. Um, you know, it, it's it will be in phases. It's not going to all happen at once, and we'll learn a lot in the process. But this is certainly um, a really it's a small amount. It's a big amount in some ways. It's a small amount in the scope of the project, but it's a really big step in terms of demonstrating support for something that is so critical in our region. So um, I appreciate you thinking about it and considering it and figuring out ways that um, that we can all move this project along together. So happy to answer questions um, or give other information if it would be helpful. Great. Chloe, thank you so much for uh, that um, brief presentation. And um, I want to just uh, give a brief shout out to Tim. Uh, thank you for your dogged support of this item and getting it on the agenda. I think it's really important. Um, we absolutely need more units in this town. And I think that this is uh, one small step that the board and the municipal government of the town of Brattleboro can take towards uh, that goal. So uh, thank you both uh, board members. Let's, can we keep, we'll keep Chloe up here uh, if we've got questions. Um, so board members questions, Daniel? Yeah, um, maybe I missed this because I just stepped out. Is this amount of, so I'm in favor of this request for funding. Um, I think your project's really the most important housing thing that's happening in this town. And it's really, you know, aside from smaller projects, yeah, Every housing project is is hard to make happen, right? And but yours is at such a magnitude that it would be profoundly impactful, um, which is why I'm in support of the money. Um, is this amount of money that we're gonna give to you, presumably quite soon, gonna be timely enough? Because I know that your request came in a while ago. We had some technicalities to iron out, and this is the earliest agenda we could get it on. Um, it's actually perfect timing. The Thompson Trust um, gave us through the month of March to find a match for their for their grant. And so um, if this can get turned around, I think and the Thompson Trust can be flexible. Also, they're very um, they're very uh, good partners, but it, it it's perfect timing in terms of being a match for that grant. Great. OK, then in which case I got a motion unless you really want to make it. Oh, we should like to let you make it. Possible. Uh, I don't have uh, I have a comment. Uh, Liz, yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to say, especially to Chloe, as we've discussed, I have met with Chloe about my support for this project. Uh, it's really particularly valuable because it's a um, mixed income and mixed use development. And um, that also in some circles makes it more difficult to get public funding. But I, I also mentioned that I think it's our support and the townwide support and the, the support that that Chloe's been getting from uh, not only the community, but our our town planning office, all of that is valuable to the development in terms of, you know, sometimes projects reach roadblocks because they don't have town support. And that is not the case here. And so I wish this project all the best. And I hope that this this uh, down payment will help bring great things. Great, thank you very much, Liz. Uh, other board members? Uh, Tim, did I see a hand or? Oh, I was gonna make the motion. I'm just gonna see if there's anybody in the community Sorry. that wants to speak on the item. Uh, Franz? Franz Reichman, District 2. Um, hi, Chloe. Uh, and uh, I live in the neighborhood there, so I'm speaking from a very particular point of view. And that is that in looking at the infrastructure for this proposal, um, one word I haven't heard mentioned nearly prominently enough is transportation. And uh, uh, putting 300 housing units in our neighborhood would change it drastically. And I think right from the very start, it's important to look at how people are going to come and go from this area, which has really only two access points that I see, one on Maple Street and the other potentially from Canal Street. Huh. So, I mean, this is really this is a big, big question that would have a profound effect on that entire part of town. Just a very quick look at Google Maps tells me that this would double the number of 
homes in the area. So I support this. I think this should go forward. Um, and I would like to make sure as much as I can that transportation infrastructure is a prominent consideration as the question is considered further. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Franz. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Liz? Uh, I, was gonna, oh. I was just going to say that any good master plan architect will provide for proper egress. And then there's traffic engineers who will do the rest. Uh, Tim, I was just going to, you know, stick up for uh, it's it's exactly what it's described as as a plan. Um, it doesn't mean that the end product is going to be 500 units. It doesn't mean that it won't be a gradual project. This is just to get us us all together as a community to the point where things can be looked at and really worked out. Um, I appreciate all those points. Um, I guess my question would just be simply, uh, Chloe, the town is about to, it seems like is about to make an investment in this project. Um, in uh, that investment, I guess I would request that as this project moves forward, if you come back and speak to the select board um, so that the community can know um, how it's progressing and can address concerns like this and hear more about it um, as we move forward. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of the plan. You know, we have done a couple of neighborhood meetings um, and we, we plan to reach out more as the design comes into focus so that we can get feedback. Um, again, we, it's not just our project. We really see it as the community's project. So that's a critical piece of all of this. So absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and I, I greatly appreciate that. Um, Jess, did I hear? No. Okay. Um, I don't see any, any hands on Zoom. Anybody else in the room? Uh, I don't see any. No, sir. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Tim? Thank you. I'd be honored to say, I'll make a motion to accept the request by Winston Prouty for financial support in the amount of $50,000 for housing development planning. Tim has made a motion to accept the request by Winston Brown for financials. I'm getting <laughs> my eyes just like completely lost. Um, I it all. Uh, to request by Winston Prouty for financial support in the amount of five, uh, $50,000 for housing development planning. Four members. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's going to carry 5 0. Uh, thank you so much, Chloe, uh, for uh, being here. And we wish you the best of luck as this moves forward. And we'll see you soon. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to uh, new business agenda item 8E, uh, which is the ARPA preliminary project list allocation and set asides. Um, let's just ignore that number to the that, that time to the right of that. Yeah. And um, uh, John, I think this is uh, a uh, thing you're taking first. Yes. Um, so at your February 21st meeting, you discussed a possible process for allocating the remaining local ARPA funds of approximately 2.7 million. But during this discussion, it became clear that you would like to see further information on potential projects that this funding could go towards. So town staff has compiled a list of projects uh, with input from Brattleboro department heads and other staff, and that is provided as attachment A to this uh, memo. The uh, results of that was uh, were that we uh, came up with uh, 31 projects that our staff recommended, and we uh, provided information about each of those, uh, limited initial information about each one of those, as well as a potential prioritization bucket to uh, put those in uh, immediate, medium term, or long term. The uh, total amount wa was about $7.7 .7 million worth of projects. There were two, however, uh, immediate needs projects, higher priority projects, uh, listed in the um, in, in the uh, a, a attachment, and those included two projects: one, uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for increasing the fire department's effective response force by one firefighter per shift from now until June thirtieth, twenty twenty four, and. Uh, $1,750,000 for a fire EMS startup cost set aside. The first project would address the gap in effective response force that we discussed earlier this evening uh, in, um, and allow us a uh, transition until a long-term fire EMS solution is determined. 
uh, the addition, uh, the additional firefighter per platoon funded by this project would support current firefighters by giving, uh, their teams additional capacity, as well as allowing the department to more consistently respond with two engines. The immediate need for the fire EMS startup cost set aside project is to allow viability for the one of the possible fire EMS staffing models, that of a fully municipal EMS. Reserving this amount of funding would allow for that approach to be implemented if the select board chooses it in September 2023 in accordance with the um, process that you approved earlier this evening. Um, it would allow that to happen without bonding or without increasing the tax rate to equip the town with ambulances, technology, uh, supplies, and other startup costs. If the select board were to choose an alternative fire EMS staffing model, such as contracting for EMS services, then this funding could be re redirected to other projects in September. So staff recommends that these immediate needs be addressed now to allow adequate time to analyze and determine a long-term fire EMS approach. Uh, we have no recommendation about the remaining medium and long-term needs projects at this time, but um, would be happy to come back at another time in the future to address those if you would like. Excellent. Thank you very much, John, for the introduction. So we'll start with the board members. I see Jess first. Ian, would you mind if I started us off with a motion? Oh, I um, yeah, you can absolutely. Ron, uh, how do you like that? <laughs> I. Yeah, I think you definitely can. Here's the, here's, can I give a rationale and then? Please. Okay, my rationale is it's late. We've committed to being inclusive and having a community process with the ARPA funding, but there are two items that I think we need to address right now that we should discuss and deal with. And then the rest of the conversation can happen at another meeting. So I'm going to make a motion to allocate 350000 to Fire Effective Response Force and set aside $1,750,000 until September 2023 for possible fire EMS startup costs from the $2.7 of remaining unallocated Local American Rescue Plan Act funding. Okay. Jess has made a motion, and let's have some discussion on the motion. Um, other board members, Liz. I uh, I wanted to thank uh, Town Manager Potter for providing this list. I remember, I think I was kind of jumping up and down asking for it at the last time, and um, this is really what I was looking for in terms of gathering ideas from all of the different staff departments, and so on. and oh, and I can also note that it includes a potential mobile crisis team design. Um, but I am also um, understand the um, short-term and long-term needs that have been discussed, and I support this action. Thank you, Liz. Uh, other board members? Uh, Daniel? Yeah. Um, so earlier, we set a goal for an effective response force. And in that discussion, we started talking about money. And I said something along the lines of, if we're going to have that goal, then we need to figure out how to achieve it. This is one way to achieve it. I support this particular um, recommendation from staff. I want us to attend to that particular bit of business ASAP because having a decent sized effective response force for fire is really important for public safety. Um, and then the, you know, the 1.75 million, that's like, woo, that's a lot of money, right? And yes, that's a lot of money. And so as the board and the public, you know, learn more about our EMS options. And as we really sharpen our pencils on what it's going to cost, setting this aside now gives us an option for later on. If we do not choose to set this aside right now, then what we're saying is um, when we get to that decision point, we have no idea how to fund it. Um, and you know, the other the, the most readily available options are well, you bond for it. So that's you guys paying for that. Um, or I don't know, or you find it in the couch or something. Um, so you know. For the public, 
I bet there are some raised eyebrows right now um, across Brattleboro. And this should be, you know, this is a large sum of money. But I think if we're really being serious about exploring all the options, right, having a dedicated service that's in-house, contracting, or having a dedicated contractor, we need to provide funding for those. And this money is one-time generational money. And what we're talking about is a potential one-time generational action. So it's a nice alignment. Um, and in September, we'll be able to say yay or nay. And you and I and Ian will be there and these guys will be there. And some of you probably will be there as well. And we can hash it out then. But I think for now, it's a good place to stick it. Uh, Jess? Um, it's a good place to stick it. Yeah. And and um, I hope that if the path is chosen to go with an in in-house EMS service with the fire department, there can be another discussion about whether or not these funds are used to mm -hmm. support that or Absolutely. whether exactly what, what the, if we find it in the couch or whatever it is, right. but that this is not the, yes, we're using it for in-house EMS. This is a, we're going to save it and see if we need oh. it or to tap into something, mm -hmm. but we're not committing it to that yet. Sure. I want that couch. Oh. <laughs> the couch with a million and a half dollars. Um, are there board members? Uh, I can speak to it unless you're ready to, Tim. Oh, you go ahead. Please. Yeah, um, I think specifically to the uh, one point seven uh, five million. Um, this, in my opinion, is about transparency. Um, the board uh, considering moving to municipal, full municipal fire EMS. Um, and the community considering that need to understand that ARPA funds um, utilizing them to achieve that has to be part of the consideration. And so the, I, one of the reasons I wanted to, I want, I, I am going to vote for this and I want um, the community to know about it now is so that as we have these difficult conversations about where we go with fire EMS uh, in the months to come, that this is an element of the discussion mm -hmm. that we are talking about not only um, the differences between um, the costs, the expenses, the service provided, uh, dedicated ambulances, that kind of thing, but also that if we go with a certain uh, a certain model, that we are potentially going to allocate an extent an immense amount of the ARPA funds that we have uh, to make it achievable, and so. Uh, that, that's why it's important to t be talking about it this early in the process, because we're all thinking about how we're going to fund it. And so I want community members, when they're thinking about this, to be thinking about that as well, the, the funding source. And so um, this is, yeah, it's very important to me that this is a part of the conversation at this, at this phase. And I have to uh, really um, ap appreciate the work done by town staff to get us to a place where we can... Uh, uh, actually be looking at a number um, to understand sort of what the cost could be. So um, yeah, I, uh, I'll stop there. Um, Tim, unless you'd like me just to pass it to. Um, I'd like somebody to convince me why we need a set aside <clears throat> and not just say, you know, we're, thinking about that would might be an option to help pay for these one-time startup costs. And I want somebody else or the same person to convince me why we wouldn't pay for salaries in some, with something other than ARPA. Anybody so you want to take a crack at it? Ooh. I'll take a crack. I'll take a crack at the first one. I'll take a crack at the first one. Honestly, it's, it, and I, I sort of like object to the, both of these being together. And, I think and you could friendly amendment to, to divide. I know, them. but I mean, I'm at this point, I'm sitting on no on both. So, okay. Um, I'll, I'll, let me take a crack at the first one and Jess may have a crack at the second one. Um, first one, uh, to me, it's a fairly simple answer um, because we would basically be doing a set aside in all but the actual saying that we did the set aside if we don't, because it would be, pretty irresponsible to uh, vote to, to make decisions on this uh, funding if we are seriously considering fire EMS uh, before we make a decision on fire EMS. So we should wait to make decisions on the amount of money that potentially the town could incur if we wanted to transfer trans, transition to uh, full fire EMS 
um, prior to, to September. And so we would be essentially doing a set aside without actually saying that we're doing one, in my opinion. And so th- that's what I mean by transparency. We're just saying we're this is this is the amount, and uh, you know the community should be thinking about that when we're thinking about this model. Okay. Uh, Liz or Jess, I'm sorry. Jess okay. first. Yeah, the, sorry, second, the second point was about the salaries piece. And I think, you know, this is a very unique situation because we are in exploration. We are in learning mode right now. And we have not landed on what our real path into the future is with EMS, which has a direct impact on the staffing of our fire department. And while we're in this unknown zone, I don't think it would be fair to put into the general fund salaries for positions that may not exist 12 months from now. We may not need to expand the fire force if we go with a comprehensive contractor model. So I think that it's a fair one-time use of something something like that, rather than putting it in the regular budget. Liz? One, just one more time to say the word nominee. <laughs> yes, we're still having issues with- Oh, sorry. Anomaly. This is just a one time. Okay, let's hear from- uh, Yeah, uh, Daniel? I, I was actually going to ask John, because I feel like John has made a very clear case mm. for this. Um, if you would uh, argue, oh, um, them. actually, I mean, just uh, I, I don't have much to add to what was already said, except right. that uh, what what this by by treating it as a set aside, Tim, it does free up the remaining amount, six hundred thousand dollars, for the board to consider spending sometime between now and September if they wanted to, because we would have you know reserved the possibility that you use the one point seven five for. Uh, the EMS project, and then the staffing expenditure. Like you feel like we've explained. It oh, it's a that's a completely allowable use of ARPA funding, and uh, it is like Liz is saying. It's a one. It's a one time cost. It's not an, necessarily an ongoing cost. So I think it's it's appropriate, but um, that's up to you to decide. Mm-hmm. Uh, other board members, Tim, do you want to respond to that, or am I going to? Um, Never. Yeah, it's kind of this is bugging me. So, okay, do you, um, I feel like I'm gonna go out on a four to one here, but that's okay. Um, I kind of remember back to uh, to Kate's comments about timing too. So, I don't know. Why don't I? Why don't we hear from people? Yeah, let's hear from people. Uh, so, I Chief Howard hand raised in the public. Um, I think I actually had a, no, a member of public with her hand up first. Um, I don't know if is chief supposed to be presenting. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, sure. Yes, please. Uh, Hi, my name is Beth Kendall. I'm district three and I'm a town rep. Welcome Beth. Hey, thank you. Um, and anyway, I won't think, go on thinking, but <laughs> I, this is about the 35,000. Yeah. Uh, 350,000 <laughs> cheap firemen, I'm sorry, um, is that it, it's my understanding from the chief is that they need two people regardless of what we do with EMS. Absolutely regardless. That seemed to be what the Triton report said. That's what that's what we had a discussion about. In that case, I think that it shouldn't be ARPA money. I think it needs to get into into the budget. And I would move to increase, you know, if I were in town meeting right now, I would make a motion to increase our town budget by that $350,000 because I think it's going to be an ongoing expense. It's not, I don't believe it's a one-time expense. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I guess we have responses, uh, brief, and then I'm going to go. Yeah. Yep. John, correct me if I get this wrong, but the thing with amending the town budget is that budget takes effect July 1, and we actually want to hire these people like yesterday. Um, yes. That's you know, and so whilst town meeting is Saturday, the budget that they're voting on takes effect July 1. And so we can't pay for the, we can't even hire those people until July 1. And we actually really need them today. 
Uh, Jess? The other piece, and um, the other piece is, do we need, do we need those people no matter what form of EMS we do? And Chief, how, well, the chart that we have in our backup documents shows that there is a model of EMS that we could have where the fire department would not provide any first response to events in town. And if the ambulance that we contracted with was the one providing first response and transport, that we would not need additional firefighters on staff. So that is that is the one option where we actually wouldn't need to hire. However, I think we heard from Chief Howard tonight that, uh, that he would want to continue the first responder system in the fire department. But that would be a select board policy decision. Correct. Uh, any other responses to that? And, or else I'm going to go to uh, David, who's had his hand up patiently. Um, well, it's easy to keep your hand up on Zoom. True. <laughs> you just got to press the button once. <laughs> Chief, uh, I, Chief uh, I, I'm just going to do stick with my, uh, yeah. We're going to David? Yes. Thank you. Uh, David Lovenbach, District 3. Uh, I strongly object to the proposed motion to tap ARPA for $350,000 for additional fire department staff and to set aside $1.75 million of ARPA funds for startup costs for the fire department-based EMS. On several occasions during select board meetings, I called for sustained public participation in decision-making about the use of ARPA funds and was assured by one or another select board member that that would happen. At the last select board meeting, there was a discussion of a proposal for tranches of ARPA spending and some scattered discussion of projects. We now have a staff generated list of projects some of them undoubtedly worthy, but still no sustained public engagement in the use of this once in a lifetime gift of money. Again, I urge you to start the ARPA spending project with a community discussion of public preferences for how this money should be spent for the town's long-term benefit. Let me add that I intend to offer an amendment to Article 15 at RTM to add $350,000 to the budget to cover the addition of three firefighters, a change in staffing, which I support. Thank you. Huh. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much, David. Um, board members want to respond to that before we hear from the chief? Uh, okay, uh, Chief Howard. As it's already been mentioned, that the three positions we need regardless, and as I said earlier, as long as I'm fire chief, we're going to be doing first response. You're not going to find an ambulance service that's going to do transport and first response. That just is not going to happen. They rely on all other towns to do, to provide their fire department to provide first response. So regardless of which ambulance model you go with, the fire department's going to be doing first response, and we need these three other three people regardless. Great. Thank you, Chief. Uh, back to the to Zoom. Um, I can't see because uh, the mouse is in the way. I believe it's uh, Dick Gray. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, sorry, Dick, do you want to join us? Yep. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm in agreement with Dave. I certainly mentioned this earlier on this evening. Uh, you could see the dominoes falling with the discussion. And Dave's correct. Uh, getting public opinion when uh, you're already at the finish line. So it didn't, doesn't really make any difference what the public says to the board. Public opinion should become before the items come uh, up for the board to vote on whether you would agree. So uh, I'm the third person that says, take away the, at least uh, as a minimum, take away the $350,000 here and bring it up before town meeting. That's transparency. What happened here isn't transparency because there was certainly, as I would agree with Dave, no discussion 
with the public about ideas of what they would like to see uh, this money spent on, other than the one that I suggested giving some money to the skating rink project uh, earlier on in the budget discussion. There have been no discussions with the public. And so we have been excluded from this. And you've just taken the town manager's list, which are none of what the public has offered and says, okay, this is what I'd like you to do. And you have followed like little puppies. And I'm sorry for that analogy, but that's what's happened. You, you have not asked for our opinion uh, and by getting it now, you're already at the finish line and it doesn't matter. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Uh, back to the room. I'm not sure. I think it was Franz. Um. Franz Reichman, District 2. Uh, so first of all, uh, let me just say that I really like the list of possible projects. I mean, there's just so much good stuff in there to talk about. Could be other things added, but to me that forms a really solid basis for an examination of, of what the priorities ought to be for spending these funds. Um, I would also say, well, I, I, you know, I do feel like this would have been something that could have been postponed for a couple of weeks and had new board members participating in, but uh, th that's not such a big deal, but it, it's, in, it's in the back of my mind. Um, what I really think is that this motion should be split in two, as Tim had alluded to, um, because I have a lot less of a problem with uh, the set aside for the future, hoping that we clearly acknowledge that the decisions are yet to be made and are not implicit in the set aside. But I, I think that's that's a point that can be clearly made. Um, but I think the issue of the spending to hire additional firefighters um, is one that if it's so important that it needs to be done right now, then the select board has the authority to spend money in an emergency. Basically, I'm hearing that this is an emergency that can't wait to go through the normal budgeting process. Uh, you could allocate sufficient funding to get us yeah, on an emergency basis to get us through the rest of this fiscal year. And then the remainder of the needed funds could be part of the budget for the coming fiscal year. Uh, and I agree that this would be something good for town meeting to have a, a chance to, to talk about too. So I would advocate splitting the motion. Um, I, I don't have a problem with uh, putting the funds in abeyance, waiting for a decision on EMS, but I do think that uh, the regular budget should be the source of the funding for additional firefighters. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Franz. And I would say that that's one of the issues with making the motion at the very beginning is that I think the board may have landed on splitting it uh, through some discussion. But, now, but you can just split it now. What? So uh, there a motion on the floor? There is a motion on the floor. Uh, so there'd be a friendly amendment to basically, or we could just vote it down and then make a new one. But I think um, uh, a friendly amendment to uh, split the motion would be a way to do it. Um, I believe. Uh, you could vote on Jess's motion. I would prefer to split it uh, myself as well. So there's more members. There. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I'm 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 just ta talking about Franz's thing, but I I do want to hear from more of the public. Um, yeah, I I think that I there might advocate for a little discussion about Franz's suggestion and whether that's viable. Yeah. No. Of so I mean it's not part of your original motion, so I don't want to like step on your motion. But as it exists, I'm just gonna vote no on that first one at least. If you want my yes, why don't we just do you, does anybody want to explore that? Well, I think that the fact that we've heard from multiple RTM members that they're gonna make a motion to RTM for the 350, it seems fairly foolhardy to just immediately allocate the 350 from ARPA. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I hear Daniel's point on our desire to move um, more uh, expediently on this than that. Um, but I think that as Franz suggested, there are sort of creative ways that we could do this. Um, and if we are hearing from Chief that this is going to be a recurring cost, no matter what decision we make, which I don't know if I'm in agreement with you about that, but, but I guess we can battle that out later. Um, uh, maybe it makes more sense for this to be something that RTM considers. Um, 
Uh, Jess. A question on that. Operationally, what happens if it doesn't pass at RTM? Exactly. Then we, we come we, back to it? Yes. I think that's basically what we would do. Yeah, that would just uh, delay yeah. things uh, several weeks <laughs> or more. Uh, a month, maybe, yeah. before we can start hiring. Right. Um, other discussion on this before? Yes, Daniel. The issue for me is less about how it gets funded and more that we expediently add to the fire department staff. Um, in the financial report every month, many members of the public, including and members of this board, have been observing you know, a challenging overtime line. Chief Howard has spoken to us about all of the complex ways in which that overtime line is made up. Hiring three additional staff will help reduce the need for overtime. Reducing the need for overtime is good for the public because we want our firefighters to respond to these calls fresh, right? So I respect town meeting, but I also respect the powers that have been given to this board and I would like to take action on this today. Uh, I'm going to go back to Zoom first. Uh, oh, unless Liz, you want to speak to? I just wanted to uh, mention that one of the most compelling things that Chief Howard says was about um, having two firefighters responding to a fire and how dangerous that was for the firefighters and for the people who may be trying to rescue. And I don't want to be responsible for continuing an unsafe situation. And I want it remedied sooner rather than later. Uh, we're mixing two ideas here, aren't we? Don't we have a 5-0 agreement that we want to move forward quickly with the hire? So um, this is about how we pay for it. I think it's how we pay for it, yeah. yeah. So the, I think the question either goes to John or Patrick. Let me start with John. Um, so if the boards uh, basically made a motion that said, um, uh, uh, staff, please move immediately in hiring using uh, our emergency capacity to do that. Um, if uh, the funding for the 350 comes from RTM, use, well, we will utilize that funding um, starting, July. starting July 1st. And if not, then we can then consider ARPA funds um, after RTM. Is that uh, doable or is that not? Yeah, yeah, I think that is a possibility. I yeah. can't think of a reason right off the top that it would be. Uh, Alternatively, what you could do is is approve the ARPA funding and then if the budget is increased by 350 on Saturday, don't, we don't do it. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll stop writing the check. Writing from a different funding. I hardly think we're going to get anybody hired before Saturday. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, let's uh, keep here. Okay. Yes. I think there was another idea out there that we commit a certain number that would get us to July 1st and then let RTM do what they're going to do. And if they don't add 350 to the budget, then we just do the ARPA thing for the rest of the way. Except you're not on the board. Yeah. We. Uh, okay. That's an interesting thought too. Um, okay. Uh, other uh, discussion on that before I hear we hear from Bob? No? You got me if we go that route. Okay. Uh, Bob? Or did your hand go down? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was Frick first. Frick's by District 3. Uh, Franz said what I had in mind earlier, but yep. I also, uh, um, I think we want to keep our chief, so we don't want to be have to hire four people. Um, so, <laughs> and I think he's been doing a fantastic job through all his different roles. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I was wondering about, I mean, I was at first wondering why couldn't you just fund the three months in between, interim three months. Um, if there's a question of where it comes from, um, we're going to find out in just a few days whether the town meeting approves the additional money. Um, can you vote on something that's contingent that 
depending on how things go at town meeting could go a couple different ways. I, I'm not mm-hmm. advocating for any of these particular things. I'm just putting Curious. it out there as, you know, can you do, do you have that power? And if so, <laughs> would you consider it? Um, I'm not okay. sure the answer to that. Um, I mean, my recommendation would be that if if you like this idea to approve it now so that we could start posting this and moving forward tomorrow. And um, and if town meeting uh, thinks otherwise, then we could come back and revisit it. But we would still have a commitment then and could be moving forward. That, that's that's essentially what I would recommend. So. Uh, uh, Bob's back on. Mm. Question about what John just said, the clarifying yeah. question. Yeah, before we go to Bob. Yeah. So. If this board tonight votes uh, to use $350,000 of ARPA with the intent of hiring three firefighters and funding that position until July 24, yes. June 24, um, and then town meeting votes to increase the budget by the same amount and advises us that that's what they'd like us to do with the money, we have no obligation to follow town meeting's advice. It's advice, and the general fund budget would have been increased by that amount. Like... There's no obligation upon us to then not use the ARPA money and take that. What's that? You're being reported. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm in a public meeting. It could be no- I'm trying to understand what the implications are of this decision. Um, you know, I want to fund this. I've already been very clear about that. Um, you know, so if town meeting increases the general fund budget yeah. and we've used the ARPA funds, like, Would you want to? I guess I just want to understand what the options are there. Yeah, I, I'm not totally following you, Daniel. The, yeah, well, it's late. You know, yeah. that's yeah. the but, thing. I but mean, we always know that that if that yeah. if town meeting yeah. adds funds, yeah, um, mm-hmm. and and specifies a purpose for that, it's not legally obligated. The board is not legally obligated to use those funds for that purpose. Correct. But we will. Yes, we usually do. <laughs> because, we typically, do. you know. Some of you want to get reelected, and Man. it's the <laughs> that's what we've always done. I mean, it's it's clear; it's yeah. a clear mandate. Yeah. So, sure, okay. I, I guess I was just but, exploring like the the you know the possibilities. Um, so I I guess my alternative thought would be: could we hear what the amount it would be for um uh just the three months before uh the new fiscal year? Um. Yes, but we I, we could not figure that out on the fly. Here. But we so, could make a motion that was basically that amount. Um, yeah, it would be good to know exactly. Again, I would recommend we just do the full amount. And if the town meeting decides to fund this, then we'll come back and we'll um, we'll take we'll back that amount, back the difference out of ARPA. Great. Yeah, can we make a motion contingent on that? I guess that would be, you would could feel, make, I see you. I've got Bob first and we're just, yeah. Sorry, Peter. Um, Bob? Shall we? Yes, let's hear from Bob. Reading ahead. Hello, Bob Ozer, District 3. I lowered my hand before I thought I was going to get unmuted. Um, so I think you're a very good discussion, a very, um, very in discussion on this, and uh, it's a good one to have at this point. Uh, I uh, caution a couple things. It seems to me that the 350000 is a recurring expense. It is a personnel expense. It uh, looks like um, everything that's said that, that, that those firefighters are needed and will be needed in the future. Um, the set aside is a little bothering because it does, in a way, message that you've already made a decision, even though it's a set aside. It also constitutes three quarters of this one time ARPA money being used for this one issue. Um, so that might be something. So, is this a prudent decision, the way you're going about it? I want to read this quick, and this is the end of my comment. This is from the Government Finance Officers Association. 
the free nature of ARPA funds. ARPA funds not recurring, so you should be applied early to non-recurring expenses. We know the personnel expenses are, are recurring. We know that the startup costs, you need to do capital equipment replacement. So that's recurring as well. So there should be taken to avoid creating new programs or add-ons to existing programs that require an ongoing financial commitment. That's the GFOA.org website. So thank you very much and uh, continue the discussion. Okay. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, Daniel, you want to speak on Real that Real quick one? response. No, it's okay. Bob, this is important. I hear you about the ARPA funds um, for the set aside. It's a lot of money. People need to know that it's a lot of money. People will make that, um, you know, the fact that we would be using a significant percentage of the ARPA money as part of whether or not it's prudent to go to municipal fire EMS, right? That's And that's us putting that out there. As far as the decision, I want to say it again, nice and loudly and clearly, no decision has been made. What we authorized uh, earlier was a parallel track approach, which explores, um, you know, potentially contracting, potentially doing it in-house. That's what we're doing. Everyone's working bloody hard on it. And, you know, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, Kate. It was Kate first. Sorry, Peter. I... <laughs> oh. Am I right on that? I think yes, it was Kate. Absolutely. Telling him I was first. Okay. I w- ah, I understand now. I get it. Um, Kate O'Connor yeah, Bradborough. And, and you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. That this is a decision that needs to wait to the next board. How the ARPA money is ultimately going to be spent is going to be made by the next board. Great. All this discussion of what should we do? How much should we put? It's, it's unnecessary because it can wait for the next board. Everybody's acting as if somebody's going to sneak in in the middle of the night and steal the ARPA money if you don't make the decision tonight. The people that make the decision about the ARPA money is the select board. So if you don't meet, make this decision tonight, which you shouldn't because there are two other people who, yes, they're in the room, but they're not up there. And it's a different you know, world being sitting up here or sitting up there and being it back here. Please wait. It will solve your problems. You'll know what happens at town meeting. You come back on April 4th. You decide you want to put 350 in and there's no need to set aside $1.7 million because no one's going to use it between now and April 4th. And if the only reason you want to use it is because you can say, hey, everybody at town meeting, we got a plan. That's no reason to take an action that you do not have to take tonight. You are rushing this through and you're ramming it through. At least that's the way it's perceived. And I would just urge you not to do it because it's not necessary. No one's going to spend the money sneaking in in the middle of the night. Let these new people do it <laughs> when they get the board. There's no reason for this entire discussion. And I really wish you wouldn't vote on this tonight. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Kate. Peter. <laughs> I appreciate everyone's patience and good humor on this. Um, it's I, it's a really good discussion and it's important. Yeah, I, you know, I, I view our well, Peter Case District Two. Uh, I view ARPA money like a carnival game, right? Where you get inside the tube and the money starts flying and you we got 30 seconds to grab as much money as you can and stuff it in your pockets, right? This is what like a whole ARPA thing is. Um, so what we've heard uh, thrown around is, is breaking this up into two separate motions. Right. Yes. Um, the first motion being the three hundred and fifty thousand dollars allocated for hiring of of a fire department. Right. Correct. And which we do not need to use, or it can go away. Or is that that this is the part? I'm, I guess I'm trying to get clear on. Let me. Yeah. Uh, so it was. It's three fifty to hire three additional uh, uh, firefighters. Um, I think kind of the back and forth on it has been whether it's a reoccurring cost or not. Um, and that's kind of where the board has uh, kind of split on it um, because, uh, you know, it's kind of transitional, but then also we're hearing that um, they're going to need it no matter what. So that's right. a reoccurring cost, which maybe should come from just the general fund. And, and so, um, but in $300,000 is what a, what a, what three firemen would get paid in the three month time span. No, that, no, no. Right. The exactly. 350 was for, from now to basically starting immediately through the fiscal through the fiscal year. 
So, so from now to the beginning of FY24 and then through to the end of FY24. And so because we, we know that this is a, an emergent need that needs to be addressed now, it's, it's actually a little, it probably would be a little less uh, than 350 starting FY24, beginning of FY24, if that makes sense, because we actually calculated the three months uh, included in that uh, to get us there. Okay. So does that make sense for it? It, it okay. does. It, it brings a certain amount of clarity to it. I'm, I'm still in favor of, of, of separating it. Yep. Um, I'm in favor of supporting our, our, our fire department to the best of our ability, but I, it, it does seem like there is this caveat of we're just days away from representative town meeting. And it does seem a little prudent to do as Kate might suggest and to wait to see if we can get that money approved. Uh, then maybe this conversation goes away. But at the very least, separating out the two things, if tonight is going to be a thing, um, that's I, where I would like to second exactly what Fran, uh, Franz said. Yeah. That's all I got. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Fish. Uh, yes, Jess. Um, Unless I miss, I don't know. No, I think this is just the opportunity yeah. to be fiscally responsible and make sure the town has the assets that it needs, whatever uh, the outcomes of our decisions in the future may be. So it's saying we just set a standard of six firefighters. That's important to fund. Let's make sure there is funding there mm -hmm. to get us there. Maybe RTM will support us by adding it to the budget, and that would be wonderful. But if they don't, it's there and we can get there. The other piece of it is we're going to set money aside. We'll save it. We'll hold on to it. We just won't spend it. And if we need it, so we don't go into extreme situations of bonding and debt and ending up with huge interest payments for whatever EMS transition we go to, we'll have that money. So we don't have to, so we don't have to go into debt to make a change happen. I don't know. I, I I guess it doesn't have to happen tonight, but I just think it's a good idea to move forward on it. Some it's work that we have been doing as a board for the last couple of months talking about ARPA. I'd like to finish. Yeah. Uh okay. Um other discussion now? Um well, yeah, I've just, I mean as much as I really want to be involved in some sort of ARPA allocation because I've been pushing for talking about ARPA for a year. Uh, I'm going to vote no because I don't want to use ARPA if there's any other way to avoid it for ongoing expenses. And I agree with Kate that the set aside is not needed. Other board members? <clears throat> I'm in. Yeah. I'm ready to hear a motion again and move forward. Okay. Um, boy, would would you be willing to? Can you do a contingency in a in a motion like this? I would be interested in binding the board. If you guys are really want to move it together together, and you don't want to split them up, I would like to bind this board or the new board to not expending the ARPA funds if RTM funds it. Yeah. Well, um, so we're not gonna spend all 350,000 before April 4th. If something passes a town meeting, the new board can revisit the expenditure of ARPA and pull it back, pull back whatever amount that is needed. That, that was what I was trying to say earlier. It would just allow this to keep moving along and we'd be able to post these positions this week and start hiring. That That's the the, the only urgency that I see around this. So okay. don't think you need a contingency. It is something that the new board could raise and revisit. I'm sure they'll Okay, uh, Liz? Being sep two separate motions, I think is, is desirable. Yes. Oh, you wanna break into two motions? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're down for friendly amendment to break into two separate motions. Okay, um, in that case, uh, I don't see any other hands. Um, so let's, uh, uh, Jess, would you like to do the separate motions? Sure. Uh, I move that we allocate 350000 to Fire Effective Response Force from the 
2.7 million of remaining unallocated local American Rescue Plan Act funding. Uh, okay, so Jess has made a motion to allocate $350,000 to the Fire Effective Response Force um, of the un, of the remaining un, uh, unallocated local American Rescue Plan Act funding. Did I miss any of that? Just the, no. No. Okay. Um, board members, all those in favor, please indicate with an aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Um, so that carries three, two. Uh, and we'll uh, move on to a second motion. Second motion is I move that we set aside $1.75 million until September 2023. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you want me to please? I apologize. Just stop there. Uh, no, please, <laughs> please finish. For possible fire EMS startup costs from the 2.7 million of remaining, or I guess it's like less now, um, of the remaining. remaining unallocated Local American Rescue Plan Act funding. Uh, so Jess has made a motion to set aside 1.75 million uh, until September, 2023 for possible fire EMS startup costs from the remaining unallocated Local American Rescue Plan Act funding. Uh, board members, all those in favor, please indicate with an aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Uh, so that's gonna pass 4-1. Um, is that our last motion? No, uh, no. Oh, we got no, more stuff to do. RTM motion. Oh, it's not. It's not a motion though. So I'm happy that Tim's last motion on the select board is a four-one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've got a potential motion here. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, dang. Okay. Yep. Tim could make the motion to adjourn. That would probably be you know. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so we're going to move on <laughs> to assign <laughs> motions for uh, RTM. Um, <laughs> Good night. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh no! I, don't, I think they think Chief you. and AC Cure. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Last week. This week. Uh, okay. So, oh boy, am I? I'm doing this. We right? need to. Okay. Yes. So, board. Basically, the way that we. Uh, this is always a, a fun thing. moment for us. Yeah. We basically go through and decide who's going to read which motion. Uh, I'm going to look to John or Patrick to uh, be the scribe here in writing down who is taking which one. Yeah, um, so we've got it down. Okay, great. Um, so <laughs> as um, Cher, it's funny with your cough, I think that you're sort of making a comment on it, but thanks. <laughs> um, so... Uh, where is Ooh, it? yeah. G? 26. Uh, no, it's F. Plus the infolemonaries. Yeah. Um, boy. What? Here? Oh, it's behind uh, the wrong page. I'm, I'm confused. It's behind that front oh, page. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I'm okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the... Um, Next page, really. Yeah. The... Uh, Board assigns uh, which board member will read each article uh, and make a motion uh, at RTM. Uh, and traditionally, the chair does the motion for the budget. That's what I was told. Um, and uh, so besides that, I don't know if we've actually held to that. I don't past. know about that either. Um, Them as the most senior board. I don't think that has been no, a thing. I don't think so. But. Okay. In that case, I'm fine with actually just doing it down the yeah. line. Also, as chair, I would be willing to volunteer myself for the really hard one. Oh, yeah? Uh, a lot of talking. The um, human service. Human services human motion. Service. Uh, you don't care? We'll just see randomly? Yeah. Okay. So do you want to just start? Uh, Is this where we ask for one? No. <laughs> no, let's not do it that way. Do you want to go from Liz yeah. and down? Okay. I'll yeah. take one. What about preliminary so, motion? So one we're starting with preliminary on Liz? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. I'll take the easy number. Can two. I can I ask a question? Um, can this select board commit to sitting in this order at RTM so that we kind of go down the line sure. as we're doing motions? I suppose. I guess so. Is that okay? <laughs> sure. I would just it would make it easier to remember who's next as we do. <laughs> so but then but then Jess and I can't gossip. Do you oh that's all right. All right. Uh, so article preliminary one is Liz, uh, preliminary two is Tim. If we're just going to do the, I'm just reading the very first one. Yeah. Article one is Ian. Article two is Daniel. Article three is Jess. And then from there, we just whoop, whoop, take it down. 
Ooh, sweet. Good to have to we hear can take mine. it from there. We can take yeah. it from there. Excellent. Um, wow. There's only one other thing that I think is important for the for the board to recognize is that there is at least one policy decision decision embedded in the motions, um, and that is in Article 23. I got the human services, and that is the okay. uh, human services uh, funding for next year. Um, staff has moved forward with the same proposal that was in last year's. Um, motions um but certainly the board could decide hey you know we think it should be one percent we think it should be two percent or you can leave it at 1.4 i like one percent i like one point four. <laughs> what? what wait i thought that the whole i thought that we made this so that we didn't have to make this decision because we had let rtm decide it each year you do, RTM but you have to decide it each but year. We recommend but the board makes a recommendation as to where to begin the discussion. Oh, no, for the I, past couple of years, it's... both the select board and RTM have agreed on 1.4. Yeah, well, I'd say what's and they vote. Did they vote on 1.4 for last year? We should. I think that we should start at wherever they voted it to. I think it's yours. They yeah. voted 1.4. Yeah, you voted 1.4. We've only ever voted 1.4. It's but it's a. It's oh, a decision, right? This board, oh, we, say, mean, we think it should. When be I started, we were under one, or it was one percent. Uh, just carry on the way we've been going. One point four to honor my six years of service. Gonna... I think it's land point, to listen to me at this point. Not point six. One point zero is such a nice round number. Well, let's have some discussion on it. Uh, so, board members, uh, it's basically it's deciding that we're still talking. Daniel, I propose we go with what's written down here as a starting point. So 1.4. Yeah, yes. and let RTM be there. They're going to do it anyway. Liz? Yeah, I'm fine with 1.4. Okay. Tim, can I speak to it? Yes. Good. <laughs> Only if it comes to me. <laughs> oh, not now? <laughs> no, I'm saying. Oh, oh. At the meeting. Is it my name? Can no, it's Jessica's me? name. Uh, we had comment it. from the public. Who's Rick? his name? Jessica. Rick's Pride District 3. Uh, a little bit of history on this. Uh, back in my early days at the RTM, uh, we did not have the Human Services Committee, and it was complicated and uh, uneven. And um, then we got the committee, and that uncomplicated things vastly. Um, and uh, I, I fear that you're dipping a little toe into the waters of making it complicated again uh, by changing things. And I think there was wise counsel from the uh, table on the side that uh, is worth listening to. Thank you very much, Frick. Uh, I don't see any other hands in the Zoom and I don't see any other hands in the room. Um, so are we good with 1.4? Okay, I don't think it really needs a motion. Okay, no. Um, unless Tim, if you wanna vote against the whole thing because it's 1.4. <laughs> I'd love that. Uh, okay. You know, we get votes to save that for Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true, too. It's going to be just Delta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who's got human service? Oh, that's Daniel. Daniel. Daniel got human service. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'll use my special British accent. Oh. <laughs> Finally, you get to talk for a while. Yeah. Uh, Wait, are there accepted. any H's in there? <laughs> many. <laughs> many. Okay. So uh, I think in that wise. case, I could look for a motion um, on... Don't we have a motion? The one to accept. Oh, oh yeah, yes. I'll do it. I have made any motion. Daniel? I move to accept the motions for the 2023 representative town meeting. Uh, Daniel has made a motion to accept the motions for the 2023 representative town meeting. Board members, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, that's going to carry 5-0. Uh, so for the careful listeners at home and those in the room, you'll recall that we uh, had a motion at the beginning to remove item uh, new business agenda item 8G due to an error in the both the warning and the backup material. So uh, with that, uh, I am excited to entertain the last motion of the Brattleboro Select Board 2022-2023 uh, session. The Wessel Galta era. Yes. Uh, I'm looking for a motion. You oh, I move to adjourn. Tim has made a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? <gasps> I didn't know some standing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, okay. 
Oh, it's four one three. Okay, so all those opposed. I may. Uh, so that's going to carry three two. I'm looking for a four one. Uh, wow. <laughs> Just being silly. Come on. It was a little solid. Uh, thank you very much to BCTV. Thank you so much to our interpreters who are I think gone already. Uh, thanks to uh, John and Patrick. Thank you very much.